Hey folks, welcome to the Smoking Tire Podcast. This week's episode is brought to you by Valvoline, the original motor oil. Valvoline is America's first motor oil brand, and for 150 years they've been innovating, creating, and reinventing motor oil. From the first high mileage to the first synthetic blend to the first racing oil, they've never stopped pursuing innovation to maximize engine life. Valvoline's latest innovation, extended protection, full synthetic motor oil, provides 50% better wear protection than industry standards and is 10 times stronger against oil breakdown. Valvoline Extended Protection is specifically formulated with dual defense additive technology, combining an innovative additive boosted with a fortified detergent system. You may not think you're a severe driver, but short trips, towing, extreme temperatures, turbocharged engines or heavy loads and spirited drives will put extra pressure on your engine. That's why you need dual defense additive technology. I love Valvoline because their racing history shows that these oils will hold up to the stresses of my daily life. They're the only motor oil with a dedicated engine lab where they can run specialized engine tests and standardized engine tests in their own facility. And they're the world's number one supplier of EV battery fluids, offering tailored products to help extend vehicle range and efficiency. And now you can get Valvoline at your local auto parts store. Ask for it by name, Extended Protection Full Synthetic Motor Oil at your local auto parts store. Thanks to Valvoline for sponsoring today's show. Also, it's time to talk to you about Squarespace. You've almost certainly heard of Squarespace, but did you know that the Smoking Tire website and uh, Westside Collector Car Storage website both run on Squarespace? Squarespace is really easy. I really like Squarespace because I am not a web designer. I know nothing about HTML or Java or any of those scripting things, the things that people get paid a lot of money to do. I don't know anything about that, but I was able to make the West Side Collector Car Storage website on Squarespace with from scratch within like a couple of hours really easy. They've got all these tools that allow you to start from nothing and end up with a fully functioning, easy to search through, uh, well laid out. It looks like professional grade when you're done with it. And you can make changes easily in real time. Anytime I have an update or a change to my website, I'm able to get in there really quick, get straight to the section I need to change, change it, and then boom, it's already done. I don't have to pay someone to do it. That's that's really the difference. The difference with Squarespace is you don't have to really know anything about web design and you don't have to do any like separate tutorials like the the learning how to make a website and the making of the website happen at the same time on Squarespace. Like most people don't need like crazy animations and stuff like they just need well laid out, easy to navigate, professional looking with your photography, your information. And they've got these like widgets that bring in like your Google Maps or a contact us box or videos like media. And you can just plop that stuff in, move it around and lay it out super, super easily. Whether your website's about cars or food or business or sharing photography or whatever, your uh, your resume, you know, your uh, your uh, a portfolio for your artwork. It's all super, super easy with Squarespace. So head to squarespace.com slash tire for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash tire to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. I didn't even mention that. You can you can actually use Squarespace to buy the domain itself, not just to, to, to make the website. So you can start from zero no domain, no website, and then by the time you're done at Squarespace, you've got both. So go to squarespace.com slash tire to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain and get a free trial for uh, web designing. We're also brought to you today by Policy Genius. It's the end of the year, start of a new year, actually, by the time you're hearing this, and you don't want to start your new year unprepared 
protected. You want to be protected. And Policy Genius can easily help you find home and auto coverage similar to what you have now, but at a lower price. Don't start the year by wasting money. You can bundle your home and auto insurance and save with Policy Genius. At the beginning of the year, they might be up for renewal anyway. Let Policy Genius look for a lower rate for you by comparing top insurers from Progressive to Allstate. All you've got to do is click the link in the description or head over to policygenius.com. Answer a few questions about yourself and your property. Then Policy Genius will show you price estimates for policies that fit your search and help you understand your options. The Policy Genius team can look for ways to save you more money. And if they find a better rate than what you're paying now, they will switch you over for free. Policy Genius has saved customers an average of $1,250 per per year over what they were paying for home and auto insurance, which is a lot of money. Think of what you could do for $1,250 a year extra in your pocket. Policy Genius team works for you, not the insurance companies, so you can trust them to offer unbiased help and advocate for you at every step until you're covered. They don't add extra fees. They don't sell your intro to third part info to third parties. And they've got thousands of five-star reviews across Google and Trustpilot. So head over to policygenius.com to get your free home and auto insurance quotes and see how much you could save. Last but certainly not yeast, yeast, last but certainly not least, start the year off fresh. Ha, see what I did there? Because HelloFresh is fresh, and they are making home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why they're America's number one meal kit. HelloFresh rules, you guys. Here's why they rule. They deliver pre-portioned ingredients to your door, including farm fresh produce that arrives within a week, and you get convenience without skipping on quality. You don't have to go to the grocery store. Right, Your groceries are already at home. Save the weight on the lines. Don't waste money on excess food. That's the other thing I like. When I'm cooking for just me and the wife, I often have to buy more food than I need. I only need to cook for two, but I, the thing comes in a big bundle, and I don't want to do that. Right? I don't want to waste food and throw it away. I especially hate wasting spices. Sometimes you need the spice for this recipe, but I need to buy like it only comes in like a year supply. But it'll go bad by the time I need it the next time. And it's just ridiculous. you got to spend like eight bucks on this spice that you're only going to use once a year. It stinks. HelloFresh doesn't do that. They give you pre-portioned produce, pre-portioned meats, pre-portioned spice packets, so you don't have any food waste. It's great. And don't even forget about dessert. You can satisfy your sweet tooth with seasonal, limited-time goodies like Dunkaroos cookie dough or vanilla delight cheesecake. HelloFresh is 72% cheaper than a restaurant meal of the same quality, and you can save on average over 65 bucks a month when you order HelloFresh instead of grocery shopping. That's more money to put towards those other 2022 goals of yours. They offer 50 menu and market items from each to choose from each week, including veg, vegetarian, calorie smart, family friendly, and gourmet options with lots of variety. And they offer the flexibility to easily customize your order online or in the app. You can change your delivery day, your food preferences, your plan size, or skip a week whenever you want to if you're going out of town. And I, I just. I love it because of all these things they say, but also because it inspires me to make new things. I get caught in the ruts of cooking the same stuff kind of over and over, things I can cook from memory, things I don't have to think about a recipe, and HelloFresh inspires me because I know I don't have to like find a recipe and then go to the store and then buy all this extra stuff. They just, everything will already be at my house. So I can just pull up that recipe card that they give me and just get to it and I can have dinner ready in 45 minutes even if I've never made this dish before. So go to HelloFresh.com slash smoking tire 16 the number 16 and use code smoking tire 16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts right so you got to go to the website and then also use the code hellofresh.com slash smoking tire 16 and then use code smoking tire 16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts 
HelloFresh is America's number one meal kit for a reason, folks. And now, today's episode, my old pal Adam Ferrara is in studio. I love this dude. You might remember him as the host of Top Gear America. He's also an actor. He's been on Rescue Me. He's been on Nurse Jackie. He's a stand-up comedian. His new special, It's Scary in Here, is out on YouTube right now. Just Google Adam Ferrara, It's Scary in Here. It's free. It'll come up. It's a great special. Uh, we talk about our anxieties. <laughs> we talk about our fears. We talk about cars. Ours, of course, and um, man, do I love this guy. It's a great 90 minutes of radio with our pal Adam Ferrara on the Smoking Tire podcast. Live. Exist. Don't pay attention to that. Mm. Ignore the man behind the live stream. No, not, but not Zach, because he's an integral part of this production. Okay. Look at you. Look you're up. integral. Integral. He's so integral. I'm bolted to this chair. It's a great <laughs> word, isn't it? Integral? Yeah. yeah. Especially when you're talking, especially when you fucking move seven feet from the microphone when you're doing a radio show yeah Sorry. don't you know this yet i didn't know we were on already now we are this is it this is this it the show no intro no nothing i do that later oh. i don't want to i don't want to fucking inc record some awkward intro while you're sitting here okay you know i like to save i'm very time efficient save you time save me money that'd be great if you save could home. save save time you could have it like bank it for yeah. later Ooh. Ugh. You're late. Some people can. Just 20 minutes. Like Shut a up. savings account for sleep. <laughs> like oh. just pull it out and yeah. extra. Stop that. Reverse it. I do this at night. At night I'm laying in bed. Now I do sleep math. If uh -huh. I go to bed now, I'll get three hours. Yeah. And then I'll be okay. <laughs> after after morning press, I can go back to sleep. It's can like, you nap? Yeah. I can, can sleep on a hook. You can? <laughs> what happens when you wake up? <laughs> what happens when you wake up? When I nap? Yeah, yeah. Are you okay? I pee. I have coffee. <laughs> no, like when I nap and I yeah. wake up, I'm more tired. Really? Yeah. I don't think you're doing it I right. I don't think so either. <laughs> I, think it's not I was point. told that all I had to do was lay down and close my eyes yeah. and then get up at the well, other end. Well, there's a weird thing. The body rest, but the mind rejuvenation. You need like this, some I kind of. I wake up just fucking foggy. I wake up terrified. Here's the thing I wake up in the morning. <laughs> oh, Jesus. You can't, I wake up in the rested, morning. Rested, but terrified. Yeah, rested. Yeah. Ha! <laughs> what a nap. Ha! <laughs> I'm refreshed and scared. I'm oh. just. I wake up screaming at whatever whatever injustice has just oh, been yeah. suffered in my head. Oh, my wife will wake up mad yeah. at me for something I did in her dream. Oh, I've had that too. It's fucked up. Yeah. I'm like, what? And then she'll stay mad at me for the day? And I'll be like, you know you made this shit up. Yeah. Right? She'll be like, who's Tiffany? I'm like, <laughs> you fucking made this bitch up. I don't know. Like, we're right now, oh, right now we're, uh, you know, we're going to be moving in a couple months. My, I thought you just did the house. We're in the middle. We're finishing it. We okay. got, we're, we're getting there. It's fucking forever, but we're getting there. Uh -huh. But now we're at the sell all our old shit phase. Okay. Which is fun for Hannah. Right. We just sold the bar. Right. We just okay. sold the bar out of our house, right. <laughs> which is very exciting. But she had to clean out the bar. Uh -huh. And she found a pay stub. The name Tiffany wasn't from nowhere. Oh. She found a pay stub addressed to someone named Tiffany from like 2019. And she's like, Who's Tiffany? I don't fucking know. I'm oh. Somehow this is something is 2019. You had in the employee. bar. In the bar. Like in the the drawer of the bar is like a pay stub. Mm -hmm. Who the fuck knows where this came from? Jeez. But it wound up. Uh, so she would take that name, incorporate it into a dream. Yeah, and then I'd, it would something would be my fault the next. Day. That happens to me too. Like if I fall asleep with a podcast on. Yeah. Adam Carolla's car cast. For some reason, Adam Carolla is chasing me on a hill, and I can't get away. So his voice is something. Yeah, you just wake up right thing? wing. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> You wake up and you're like, fuck. But yeah, if I listen to whatever I'm listening to in my head, yeah. that gets incorporated. Yeah, in yeah. Dream. It like it bleeds together, yeah, yeah. right? Wow. Fucking my new horrible one. What? Because I, so my house, which is a nice house, but it's- I've it, seen pictures better than a nice it's house. It's a nice house. My The house I'm living in now, the one I'm moving out of, it's, mm. on Ven it's in Venice. Right. It was clearly built as somebody's summer home. Okay. And I know that because there, it doesn't have heat. <laughs> right? Literally, no heat. No heat. Like, I have a gas fireplace that stays on for six months of the year straight. Mm. That's the heat. Okay. And so it's fucking cold when I wake up in the morning. Right. And we have cats. And so the cats sleep in bed with us. Mm -hmm. So there's cats all over the place, sure. which I love. Yeah. And it's cold. So every morning, I wake up a little sniffly. Yeah. And so now my new anxiety is... Today's the day I wake up with COVID. Yeah, I got the Rona. Every yeah. fucking day. I got the same thing. I got I, fucked up. I go, is that it? I'll stub my toe. Is that it? <laughs> is that, this I didn't is the get one? A, I didn't get a text back from my friend. I go, I got it. He knows I... <laughs> 
<laughs> he knows I got it. I'm going to have to call everybody from that restaurant Yeah, I got to call everybody on this text chain. <laughs> yeah. You can get it through the and phone now. And then the second I leave my house and I go into a warm car mm -hmm. that doesn't have cats in it, I'm like, oh. I'm better. No. Or my sweatshirt the other night was just a little tight and I got a little tickle from it. Yeah. You know, I put a little pressure on the larynx. Sure. <laughs> and I like, that this is it. This yeah. is the one. Yeah. Fuck. And scary the in here. scary thing is the, uh, incorporate the title of your special. Thank you. It's my, scary in here. My YouTube special is called "It Is Scary in Here." Yeah, and that's uh, uh, it's on YouTube right now. Eight hundred pound gorilla records. Mm. Put my name in. Boop. Go and watch it. It's free. It's, it's funny free. and it's, it's free. Funny. Yeah, you can watch on your phone. You, you can, can watch, watch on your, your, your Apple TV. Watch you can watch on your computer. Want. I watched it on the elliptical machine. You did? Yeah. Good and I was like, as I, as you you know, we're going through it. I'm like, oh my god, we're gonna have so much to talk about. He's talking about <laughs> anxiety. He's talking about depression. <laughs> he's talking about everything that I feel yeah. in my fucking life. I'm like, we're actually the same person. We are. Fuck. I'm, I suffer from anxiety and depression. How do those two energies go together? Like, ah, ah, oh. ah. Oh. I'm afraid of the future. I regret the past. How did this happen? I blame myself. I need to face my fear. I gotta lay down. I, oh. Well, we, we, your party was great, by the way. Thank you. Thank for you for coming. Me. I was I had, so, had you, so glad you made it. I had so much fun and was sitting around talking, and I, and I was talking to a bunch of your friends. You, you know, a guy by the company he keeps. Yeah. And I really enjoyed the company. Yeah, good in. friends, didn't we? Yeah, it yeah. was very nice. It was really my good. my Pilates instructor really liked you. Oh, she was she's she's like that famous actor guy. <laughs> he was great. <laughs> <laughs> they were sweet. Uh, yeah. Her and her and her girlfriend were very Yeah, nice. yeah. Shout yeah. out to Journey. Shout Great out to Pilates Journey. instructor. Yeah. I got I got a reformer in a garage. Do you really? I do. Good for you. Yeah. I don't, my car's not in a do garage. Do you fucking use it, though? It's in the garage. I know where it is. <laughs> I know if I want to go. <laughs> if I want to go. Have you used it? I have, yeah. Do you I, enjoy it? I do, When I do it, here's the thing, Matt. When I when I do it, it's great. Yeah. And you feel better and there's yeah. less pressure on your on your system. Is It's like, yes, the answer is yes, but, I, you know, humans beings. If I had a machine at home, mm -hmm. I think it would be hard to do. I it need is. the pressure of an instructor Boom. there I and all those hot it. women that I'm like, I can look like that. You know what I mean? I need to be like, they're staring at me. Yeah. They know how fat I am. I must be thinner. Yeah. Uh, but I, I, if I make the commitment where someone else is waiting on me uh -huh. and I've spent the money, yeah. boom, I yeah, will yeah, go. Yeah. So that's where I bought it from. I was on the road because I was doing uh, um, Pilates. My wife hooked me up with this thing and I'm like, I yeah, like that's this. That's the procedure. Yeah. My wife, <laughs> my wife made me go uh, and yeah. so now I, went, I go. <laughs> and the guy goes, there's a deal. They got this machine. It's my, my friend's moving and she's got to get rid of this thing and she, I can get it. And I got it for like cheap. cheap. Nice. I said, I, my buddy had a truck. I go, hey, yeah. Honey, these are those machines are expensive. Like four grand. Yeah, and the one we do, we do Legree, which is on What's the Mega Former. What's that? So you know how the Reformer you push against the yeah, springs. Yeah, yeah. The Mega Former you can push against the springs or pull against the springs from the other side. It's uh -huh. really fucking hard. Really? Yeah. yeah you feel like you're gonna die. <laughs> it's brutal. Okay. You feel like you're gonna fucking die. Yeah, I'm just but like it's good for I got you. COVID gut. I don't yeah. want. Yeah. It's like. Uh, Half of your body is getting a stretch, and the other half feels like it's about to explode. Oh, okay. That's pretty much what it is. Right? It's very hard. All right. But I, I see all these in shape people there. You know, there's like these chicks in full makeup, right? And they're like doing a pose, and then they're checking their fucking Apple Watch and like sipping a yeah. latte, and you're I, like, just kill me. I, I, yeah, I'm in my seventh grade gym shorts, <laughs> pulling this thing, and, and it's hard as fuck with a mask on. Yeah, with a mask on, it's like you really, mm -hmm. it's like high altitude training. <laughs> You know? I burped in my mask. I oh, it just collapsed. It was just terrible. And I, do, I'm like, I remember going, oh god, I don't remember eating that. What yeah. am I? What, where did this come from? Yeah, you really get self conscious about what brand of toothpaste you use mm. and, and what you've eaten for the last several days. I find mm. I either go, I should brush my teeth more often, or I'm like, well, I have the mask up, so no one else is going. Yeah. Is that what you do? At least yeah, it's, it's contained. Always, it's always like, I'm like, ah, how do I go with this? I don't know. Yeah. Here's why it's always bad because before I fly, I always have some red wine and like airport lounge cheese, right. and then I and then I got a few hours. Hours of that going on. <laughs> Coffee and a cigar. <laughs> God. I was flying in. I, I flew in um, from New York the other day. And, you know, you got your mask. I, I have the mask. This mask isn't fly worthy. 
No, no, you got the you, you got the you got to go to KNs on the got, airport. Well, yeah, whatever I got to get. So oh, I, you have a Ford brand representative shit. You got that was, at a press I was, launch. I was in a track day and they gave it to me and it was in my pocket. So yeah, I'm walking yeah. around. And uh, sir, you can't wear that mask. So they gave me some other mask. Yeah, you got to go KNs on the plane yeah. now, and that's for fucking good reason. If you've been on a plane recently and you've heard and had someone cough within five fucking rows of you, oh, I'm putting a little air thing you, on, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm bro, doing, the other day I I'm did that. doing this. I'm like, oh bro, my the other god! Day I took my vents and I blasted them yes! over my head behind me because yes! the person behind me was coughing. I was like. <sighs> I did, the passenger <laughs> I wanted to see, I put this on, and I'm trying. I'm trying to make this look nonchalant, man. Like I'm about to have one of my yeah. fails. Yeah, I'm yeah. Just, <laughs> nonchalant and masculine. Yeah, and medical. Yeah, like uh, what are you? I'm moving the air like a man. Yeah. <laughs> this is a this medical is, fan. Yeah. You gotta. What you gotta do is this you gotta is bring like a three foot straw. Yeah. And just fucking just start sucking from underneath your seat. Honestly, yeah. that's the only safe place. Yeah. yeah. I'd rather mm. have the feet. Jeez, I'm I'd putting. Re- my pen, I'm I'm figuring out the drag <laughs> coefficient. I'm just, I'm doing math. Get the hell out of here, you germy son of a bitch. Oh my God, someone coughs on an airplane. I fucking freak I out. Hannah was on a flight back the other day. She had a, a her one of her first fucking work meetings ever because mm. she's been working remotely yeah. since she started this job for a year and a half. Right. Her And she's got to fly back from, from Tahoe, from okay. uh, Lake Tahoe. The thing was in Which Truckee. means you got to drive to Reno. Yeah, which, yeah. Whatever, fine. But- a, someone's coughing three rows behind her, and she said by the time they got to the gate, like four or five people were like, open the door, like <laughs> freaking the fuck out. No. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, bad. I know. It's, it's getting sad. bad out there. It's, it's just bad. My mother, I was in, I was in New York, and Nyack is, uh, I, was, I was doing this, this club in Nyack, which is Westchester. My mm-hmm. mom's, I said, mom, come in. I'll take you out to dinner. There's a big giant mall. I'll take you shopping. You come to the Mall of America, baby. Yeah, no, Palisades Mall. Yeah, Palisades. It's not no. Mall of America. My mother's like, I'm not gonna. There's the unicorn, the new strain. <laughs> the unicorn's out there. <laughs> she's screaming. I have a pre-existing condition. I'm old. I'm not coming out. Yeah. So she's like terrified. My mother. Next time you're up there, you gotta visit my my pal Rick Demand. He's doing these crazy hot rod Porsches, and he's like really? just south of that mall. Yeah. 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 He builds crazy shit, like 500 horsepower Caymans. Wow. They're How awesome. much is that, that that bucket I just saw? The one that just sold on Bring a Trailer? Yeah. Uh, like 40K it sold for. Wow. Yeah. No That's roof. cool. <laughs> no anything. But I, well, Zach and I just drove, there it is. Mm-hmm. But Zach and I just drove a, uh, a $850,000 Porsche with no roof, no windows, and no heat. Jesus. <laughs> and it, was, uh, it was freezing, was, but it was what, awesome. Is it in Venice? <laughs> it's Well, we drove it up in Malibu. Yeah. That's it. Wow. It's very pretty. It's very Gorgeous. fast. I was not aware it didn't have heat until I sat down in the car <laughs> to go up to the morning. Matt had a jacket and another, and like a snowboard jacket over it, gloves and a hat. And I showed up in this and I was like, I dressed like, like I no. was going skiing. You 100%. You were ready. You were ready. <laughs> Zach dressed just like this. And he was like, I don't think I'm ready for today. <laughs> <laughs> That's beautiful. It is cool, isn't it? Yeah. That company's called Gunther Works. Okay. They're out of Orange County. Nice. And, um, that thing is twenty. It's twenty six hundred pounds and four hundred and thirty five horsepower, with no roof or windows. Jesus, it fucking rips. I was saying twenty six hundred pounds. Yeah, it's really light. It's light. They replaced the whole body with carbon. They replaced oh, a lot of the, the yeah the money. It is yeah, yeah yeah yeah, and they they the I admittedly these iPhone pictures of mine mm. when you when you stand up close and you take a wide angle iPhone picture yeah. it does make the proportions look a little wonky mm. if you step back and take a picture of it with a real camera or like with your regular eyes it well, looks it a little pinches more the front I've had a lot of people say Zach did you crash your car or what's up with your front toe because when I've taken a full wide shot of my car the front left wheel always like molds to an yeah. oval mm-hmm. so it's just something the camera's doing yeah iPhones like are that. not ideal for taking pictures of cars uh-huh. they change the proportions a little bit despite what the billboards tell you despite, yeah I don't buy that shot bullshit. on iPhone like that's yeah. a leaf that's not hard <laughs> that's not wheels <laughs> and the leaf is off camber what are you doing <laughs> No, the, it just does a weird wide angle thing with cars. Mm-hmm. It's, you have to stand at the wrong distance right. to shoot a car. My mirror does the same thing. There's a fat son of a bitch in my mirror, and it's got, honey, <laughs> this mirror is broken. I have a shaving mirror in my shower that's, yeah, me too. that's anti-fog, so it's that mylar. Right? Yeah, yeah. It's like not glass, mm-hmm. and it's got like just a little wave in it, mm-hmm. and it's like, it's not ideal. <laughs> 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 it's shaving because it's like... 
<laughs> Might as well just be drunk. I it's know. Like, yeah. I got to get a good one for my for my new house, like a real a real. Let's good start with heat. Here. First, get heat. We in the have house. heat. All Thank right, fucking who the God. fuck is Tiffany? <laughs> One day we'll figure it out. If you were at my house and your name is Tiffany, please let me know yeah. because you left your pay stub for You know what I do when May I come home now? I come home from the road. I kiss my wife. I kiss my dog. I thank God for my family. And I check the Hulu queue. And I'm like, what oh, movies sh- has she been watching? Because that's going to indicate the conversation I'm going to have later. Uh-huh. Oh, that's genius. Yeah. Because I'm not, please let it be British Bake Off. I can bullshit my way through a shortbread cookie conversation, but I don't want to hear like, "Do you have another family?" You know that kind of shit. Are you out of your mind? I can't afford this one. The traveling murderer. You think yes. I, would, I would be like, "Wow, you think I'm organized enough?" To yeah, have yeah. Family? I go, "Did you just fucking meet Do me?" Do you know what that would take? That would be. The, the level of organization that you already know I yeah. don't have. I'm like, there's another wife I have that has all the passwords? I can't function. <laughs> <laughs> I've been watching all these, like, I don't know why, like these alpine climbing mm-hmm. movies. I just watched The Alpinist, which is a right. crazy one, and then The 14 Peaks I watched last night about this Nepalese guy who did climb the 14 highest mountains in the world in really? six months. Jesus. Um the one, the Alpinist, is the craziest one. That one is from last year, but it's about this guy, uh, Marc Andre Leclerc, mm-hmm. who is the fucking craziest human being I've ever uh, seen. Just goes and climbs these mountains like by himself. Right. Doesn't tell anybody. To, yes. Like, just yes. fucking goes. Like, like first try. Doesn't really study it. Just like young dude who's out of his mind mm-hmm. like he's like you know that Alex Hanold guy the free solo guy who's you see that? free solo no. he was the first guy to climb El Capitan mm-hmm. with no equipment and no okay. anything right. just like a bag of fucking chalk and yeah. a t-shirt Some jerky and he was he's in this document he's like this is the craziest person I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> like, imagine hanging out with Travis Pastrana and him right. going, you know who's fucking nuts? Yeah. Like, that's the, the level of this one. Yeah. So. But I don't know why. I've been watching all these movies that are about, like, freezing your balls off in a fucking, Jeez. on a mountain. Hold Turn on. your phone off! What's happened? Uh, who is it? Oh, my God. It must have drove you nuts. I heard someone's phone ring during your special. It did. In the first, like, five minutes of your special. So oh, yeah. fucking they, phone rings in the yeah. crowd. They, 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 they I didn't care. I mean, because well, you're too nice to care. Well, it's live. You know, it's like you're used to it. It's not like, you know, what, once you, you know, once we start doing something, it's just, it's the next thing. Yeah. You know. I like it was the fun. special, though. I Thank thought it was you. fun. I, I thought fun. it's eminently relatable. That, you know, that's, that's the most uh, satisfying thing is like, if I can articulate a feeling someone else has. Yeah. That's I when you see their faces. I always like the laugh I get when someone like a wife will push the husband or point to someone. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Like, oh, okay, that's good. Yeah. And yeah. Especially with the anxiety and depression stuff. That oh was so good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Because, bit. I because wanna, it's like yeah. you know we're not alone. You know. It's oh like, yeah. I could. I used to think this is just me. I'm like I'm not that special. This yeah, is fucking yeah. everybody. <laughs> well, when I started talking about it on the show, I got a lot of nice notes from people. It yeah. was like you too. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. yeah. It I helps. can't. It, mine is, and, and we talk about Eckhart Tolle because you yes, read the book too. I read The Power of Now. Power of Now is a good book. I love the first two thirds of it, and mm. then he starts talking about Jesus, and he kind of lost me. Well, but, he makes a left turn, yeah. and then, then he goes back to Buddha. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you know where the guy is. Yeah, yeah. Know? But I love the the be an observer of your mind part yeah. instead of getting lost in what your mind's doing. I love that shit. Yeah, that worked to me. And the meditation. I was telling you about my meditation teacher because I got a book I wanted to give you that he wrote because the meditation gives me help. It just gave me kind of distance on myself to observe the thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. But I observe them like this. I see you, you son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah. It's, You're the one that's driving me fucking It's crazy. fucking hard. And then when I quit smoking weed, because mm-hmm. it was giving me a, it, I, for, for like a month, I was like, that was it. Yeah. It was the weed the whole time. And then I was like, a month later, I was like, uh-oh. Yeah. I still have fucking anxiety. Yeah. God damn it. It was me. Yeah. It was me the whole time. Yeah. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> you, it's like Scooby-Doo. You pulled the mask off yourself <laughs> and like, fuck, it's still, it's still damn me. It. Fuck. I'm still me. I'm still fuck. here. I, I, I get up in the morning. I look in the mirror and I'm like, oh, you again? Yeah. I'm sick of still you like and your this. bullshit. <laughs> but it's the, it's the thoughts. And I realize about the anxieties is you, it's all future thought is the yeah. anxiety. And the regrets in the past, and he's like, just "Stay here." So I liked that. your running back and forth yeah, bit between, back and forth. between the depression and anxiety. anxiety. Yeah, yeah, you get two of them. Yeah. But if you look at um, what Tolly was saying in his book, is that's the storytelling we tell. So when you can catch the storytelling, yeah. you can kind of stop it a little bit. Yeah, you know, it's uh, and it's it's really like 
there's a lot of like outside things that make me anxious mm-hmm. now too that I have fucking no control over. You yeah. know what I mean? Like it's the the fucking scary ass world that we're in right yeah, now. Like yeah. I don't, and I'm not scared of being sick. I'm scared of making the fucking twenty phone calls. Yeah. With whoever I was the just judgment with. they're gonna have on you. right. You know this motherfucker. You yeah. know what I mean? I, I, I had to go up. I have reading glasses, and I went up another another magnification. So uh-huh. I'm, I'm at like one fifty now. So I put the next one on, and I got in the car when I bought the one fifties, and I went. How the fuck did you let this happen? To you? <laughs> Look at what you've gone and done, you blind son of a bitch. You're going to go LASIK? You and go I'm, LASIK. I'm thinking about it. But then what if you do the LASIK and your eyes, don't they continue to get worse? you got to go back know. again? Again, I don't know either. I don't know. I don't think so. I think if you do the LASIK, it stops it cold. Yeah? I think. I think. I, I, mean, I can't go what I think. Would I you rather go back know. to zero and then one, two, three? Because right now you're at 150. Yeah. So you're going to go 150, one, two, three. I think it goes up. I don't know what is. I don't I, know. I, I can't don't know read. Numbers work right. Yeah. So this is, the, good. This is read. Read back. You'd be able to no, read. No, I can't read. 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 I can't read. <laughs> Someone with your eyes could read. Every yeah. book that matters is on tape. No. <laughs> I that's, have an Audible account that's too. Like the. It was funny. I had uh, I had Stevie Van Zandt on my podcast. Oh my god, I'm so jealous. He's great. So jealous. Great guy. He told me Bruce stories, Soprano stories. So I get the call. He's plugging his book. Right. I said. We'll send you the book. I go, send me the audio because I was on the road. Yes, but I can't sign the audio. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I got, oh, I'm going to have him sign me. He lives in my, my apartment in New York. Really? He's, he's really oh, near where I fucking got to be surreal. So he sent me the audio and he does the thing. So I was listening oh, to it's it. Him oh, reading oh, it? it's him I reading it? I love that. And I'm driving around reading it. So he, he leaves the E Street Band. He's in South Africa. He's doing the whole apartheid thing. Uh-huh. And I'm driving around. My wife called me. I'm listening to the book. She's like, you coming home? Like, not yet. He's in South Africa <laughs> under a blanket. I'm going to do another lap. Yeah, he's trying to affect change. Does what do you do need? Does he do the Sopranos bit as Silvio? Because that would be the shit. No, I, I, he, he tells great stories about it. You know, they wanted him to play Tony. I, rem- I remember her that. Yeah. When he, I, rem- I forget if it was on, if it was a bit. I think I heard it. Maybe it was on your uh, clip you posted on Instagram from right. your podcast, or I don't know. I I, mm. I follow him, and then I follow a lot of other people. Right. And he did the the podcast tour. Yeah. Maybe it was Marin or something. Yeah. But uh, but he talked about that, and I I think David Chase made the right decision in not yeah. having him play Tony. Yeah. He was he was he was like. I'm, a, I'm like a fan of Bruce Springsteen, casually. Yeah. I'm mm-hmm. more of a fan now than I was mm-hmm. at the time. At the time The Sopranos was out, I didn't know a fucking thing about Bruce Springsteen. Okay. That show started when I was a junior in high school mm-hmm. and ended when I was like a sophomore in college. So I was like, oh, it's Bruce Springsteen. But I wasn't like the guitar player for Bruce Springsteen. Right. You know what I mean? So I knew him way first mm-hmm. as Silvio. As Silvio, yeah. And then I saw, you know, I'm in the gym watching the music videos on Apple Music, and there he is, like, singing along to, like, yeah. Dancing in the Dark glory or something. Days. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, like, yes, the Glory Days video. Yeah, that's very good. Yeah. And I'm like, it does not compute. Yeah. The, with the headbands and, like, I was like, Sylvia, what are you doing yeah. up there? Get back to the Bing. Yeah. Like, it was weird as hell. Yeah. When you know somebody from some area and then you see them again. It happened to me. Um, with, when people come to see me, Top Gear fans will come by to see the club. I'm like, I didn't know you were stand. I'm like, what did you think How was going to happen? How did you think I here? got this gig? <laughs> I'm like, what did you think? We were gonna, it's a comedy club. You thought I was going to do donuts in a parking lot? <laughs> you bring on different cars to yeah. talk about. I'm going to say, oh, Tanner's here. He's short. Let's make fun of him. No, this is what we're going to do. That I mean, that does that really happen? People are like, right. I didn't know you were. Uh, they, some show. I didn't know you were going to do comedy. You were what stand-up? the fuck did they you would think show I was going to do? I go, yeah. What are you at Gotham Comedy Club? Yeah, what he, it says. <laughs> When, when you're on Rescue Me, did fans show up to the club and they were like, are you going to do fireman jokes? And you're like, no. <laughs> yeah. Where's your hat? <laughs> you know. No, but it's uh, when you know somebody from some part of life, you see them somewhere else. It's uh, it, it's the context in which you see people. In, yeah. Which is weird. It was it, like funny. I, I met Eric Clapton at the Beverly Center. Like just shopping. He was asked me directions. It wasn't like, is that Adam? It's Eric. No, yeah. wasn't that? He's Excuse like, me, sir. Do you know where the water model store is? And I went, hey, <laughs> you him? You're, you're, are you that guy? <laughs> and I pointed and he laughed because he, and, and I'm standing there and I'm, my mouth is all, thanks for Layla. I yeah. mean, what, do you, what yeah. do you say? You need some context. <laughs> it was Eric Clapton, just out of nowhere. Humans being human sometimes are very, very strange. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. There's, I mean, in L.A., that kind of shit happens. Yeah, all the know? time. New York, too, I think, but L.A. Yeah, but New a, a York, it's like, it's a more, in New York, it's, it's not like you expect it more, but it's, it, for some reason, it's not as shocking, because yeah. it's New York. Here, you're in a mall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? You do, I guess it's because you just don't, like, interact with people. 
Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like in New York, you're walking, everyone yeah. is interacting you're with everyone in the... all the time. Yeah. And so you're just, you're here, it's like when you go from your car to a store, Yeah. you only see like the clerk and, you know, your, your wife. Like mm-hmm. there's no, it's not like a hundred people on the way or a thousand people yeah. on the way. So you see, it feels like you see a higher percentage. That's good. Yeah. Because here it's like the goal of LA is to get behind the gate. Right, you know, it's like it's it's isolation. It's like yeah, I yeah. need money for a gate. And, you know, I'm going to the studio. Close the gate. <laughs> you know, close the gate. Yeah, like, it's weird. Yeah. yeah, and New York is. You're I actually, out. I miss that about New York, the interaction with humans. And because I, I live on Venice Beach, right, I interact with a lot of humans. But mm-hmm. it's it's a really specific subset of yeah. humans. And go home before it gets dark. It's, that's when yeah, the junkies it's come. Yeah, tourists out. and homeless people, and and that's pretty much it. Yeah. You know? Well, it's like Washington Square. I live. My apartment is in down the village, uh-huh. and I was just. I was in New York for a couple of weeks, so I go down to the cellar, so I walk. I can walk to the comedy cellar from my apartment, which was one of the features why I bought the joint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's awesome. So you walk by Washington Square Park, and you're in the flow of people. And depending on the wind, you either smell weed or dog shit. Yeah, yeah. Because the weed dealers are on this side, and the dog park's over here. Right. So then you know which way to... Ah! It's Indica. Yeah. The wind is blowing from the east. <laughs> But you're always in with people. Yeah, yeah. So I, in I, Venice, I, it's always dog piss mm-hmm. or someone smoking weed on the beach. Right. But the wind, always, it always blows off the ocean, mm-hmm. right? So it's always one direction. So when it blows the other way, right. you get a whole new variety of smells. <laughs> <laughs> I had a friend of mine. She was visiting New York. We were walking around, and you know the guys on the corner that sell the the the, uh, the hot the candied nuts, the hot nuts. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. I go. They smell better than they taste. It's like chewing marbles. Don't buy them. Yeah. Because you walk by. Like, I actually miss those. They st- they I know be- they're not good, but <laughs> I miss them. Terrible. I miss them. And the other, you know what I did the other day? Mm. I boiled hot dogs. How was that? Fucking great. <laughs> <laughs> did I the wanted, skin break, and that's when you knew they were ready. I was doing a. I was. I was with some friends, and we were going to do a, a, a. We were going to grill the hot dogs. Okay. And the my boy's fucking propane cylinder mm-hmm. was kaput. And I was like, I know what to do here. I have been to New York City. I've seen this. I was like, we are going to New York City fucking boil these hot That's dogs. That's right. And it was fucking dank. It was so good. I was so happy. That's like, when you, you miss smoking water. weed. Uh, it was you, great. Do you brine the water or anything? You just throw salt them in. in the water. Okay. Salt in the water? Yeah. It's a bread umbrella. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a dirty water you dog. You got to steam yeah. the bun a little bit, you know, mm-hmm. over the, put a grate over the, put a little grate over the boiling water and steam the bun a right. little bit. They were delicious. Yeah, they were that's so good. good. And a walking slice. Yeah, you go to you go to yeah, John's on nice. uh, on six. You get a walking slice with the wax paper, and you run it down. Yeah. They're finally <laughs> figuring that out here. What? Pizza by the slice. Just, yeah, by the slice. Just yeah. in general, there's a there's a million great places to get pizza in this town. Finally, mm, define the word great. I mean, great. Mm. Vito's in Santa Monica. Mm. That's fucking I've never G. had. Oh, Good. yeah. Vito's yeah? in Santa Monica. Right. That's a New York city. Damiano's, right when I used to live in Hollywood, uh, I'm pointing like I'm still there. I go think to, that's the right direction. Go actually. to Fairfax. You are just about pointing Cross at- from Canna's. <laughs> that used to be a pizza joint there, Damiano's, and it was open till 4 a.m. Nothing's open late here. No. That's the problem with, with this city. I used to have you can't my- get a food. You can't get dinner after 8.30 anymore. No. Yeah. They used to, Izzy's uh, on Wilshire was a Jew, 24-hour Jewish deli. That's outside my five-mile circle. Oh, yeah? I don't do oh, it. Oh, you don't leave? <sighs> Not unless I'm filming or I, hey, someone's paying me. Really? I mean, that's no, I joke. I, I leave, See, but I, it's just, you know, it's hard to justify sometimes because it's frustrating to get places. Yeah. Although I do like to drive. Like, I'll just, like, I'll listen to that book and I'll just... I'll go up to PCH and just drive up. Well, that you're not. That's not what we're talking about. Why? We're talking about drive up the PCH and listening to something enjoyable. Mm-hmm. Is not, I'm not. I'm talking about driving to Wilshire. Oh, okay. that sucks. That's okay. <laughs> I'll go up to PCH. Driving but I'm not going eight blocks. Driving a hundred yards at a time, yeah. light to light, sucks. Yeah. But what how does do? the food get into the house? You guys shop or Instacart or? You have well, Grocery shopping? Yeah. Oh, we gro- I grocery shop. I ain't afraid of the grocery okay, store. Let me ask you this. I am this, not afraid of the grocery this store. This is what, because I, I go for my walk. I, I venture out of the house. Uh-huh. My wife is home. Yeah. I'm basically my wife's avatar. I go out. <laughs> Matt, I go out into the world. I send information back to yeah. Home Tree, and I wait for my fucking orders to come in. Yeah. So I go out, and I, I do the shopping and stuff, and she send me lists of shit to do. Do you get text of what, does Hannah send you text of what you need and shit? No, because I'm the one who cooks. 
Oh, okay. So I just know, and I don't like leftovers, mm-hmm. and I don't like to buy, I don't know what I want to eat tomorrow. Mm-hmm. So fortunately, between here and my house, there's 15 grocery stores. Okay. So I stop at one, and I get, the, I, sh- I go to the grocery store every single day. Yeah, me too. And I get whatever for dinner My wife lived in day. France. She goes, you're European. You just yeah. shop. I said, well, it's yeah, a very I'm, European thing I'm to eating. do. eating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. This My mother? In, loosely about cars. Yes, I stopped by car at the grocery store. <laughs> and I, <laughs> All right, here's what I want to do. I My favorite to... grocery store is like kind of a secret because it's mm. it's over in Marina del Rey. Mm. It's Gelson's and it's underground. The and underground it's very Gelson's? poorly signed. Okay. Like there's two signs and they're this big and you can't fucking read them. And the entrance to the parking lot is like in an alley around the back. And so even during the 2020 grocery store mm. shit show, it was still like, da, 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 like nobody's fucking down there. It's great. It's great. It's great. I can park. I can park. I shit you not this grocery store. I'm going to ruin it by saying it. Okay. No, I'm not. I can park in either the first or second space mm. from the front. Every single time I go, really, I can I can park in one of two specific parking. That's how empty this place is. And it's in Venice. It's in Marina, Marina del, Rey. del Rey. Yeah, you want to go after the show? We'll go I, together. I, I might go. <laughs> we'll go together. I need. I got <laughs> football we'll Sunday. Caravan over to the. <laughs> we'll go. Take me. You take me to the Anne Frank Gelson's. That's where I want to go. It's like that. This is like comedians and cars getting coffee. Like, where are we going? Grocery store. Grocery Special store. Grocery Say store. That. But that's it. I mean, you go out and you drive and they stop. And I, I told my wife, I said, come on. I don't know. I'm not leaving the house. It's actually not the driving that bothers me. It's the parking. Yeah. It's very stressful to fuck. Where am I going to park? Fuck. It's in this town. It's tough. It's because no one knows how to park. And no one's, you get, and, and, and there's a big, t- compacts only. Tahoe. Okay, fuck. fine. I just had, I just did a, uh, guessed it on a, a podcast. It's a, it was a truck podcast. Mm-hmm. And they just, all they wanted to hear about was how much I hated the Ram TRX because it was so, anno- you know that, that car, the Hellcat yeah. Ram? Yeah, they put the Hellcat in yeah. the Yeah, and it's also fucking enormous. Yeah. And I don't care if you drive a big truck, but this truck is so big yeah. that it inconveniences the people who park on either side of you also. Sure. And the host of the show's point was, I can fit the wheels of the truck inside the lines of the parking space. And I go, if your truck literally is touching the lines on both sides, how is the person next yeah. to you going to open the You can their fit the doors. wheels at the fender arches. Or all. <laughs> now, what if he parks next to another TRX owner? That's when he would learn. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's when he would. That's when they would learn. That parking spot in that photo seems like it's a oh, bit yes, larger that's a than huge one. I was trying to find. That, I think that's at the TRX factor. And oh, by the way, if you look at the bottom right corner of the photo, it was over the line. Yeah. Look, the wheel. That wheel. I think it's about a foot and a half over the whole yeah. of the line. I just wanted to see it next to a Raptor because it, it, in person it looks much bigger than a Raptor. It does. Yeah. I. You know what I want to drive? That hmm. little Hyundai, the Santa Cruz, the uh, oh, the, the little the pickup Ute, truck. Yeah, Zach Ute. had a. Didn't you have a go? Yep. In it? Yeah. yeah. How is it? Really nice. Did it, the little turbo in it? Yeah, it drives really, really nice. Uh, it feels way more like agile and car like than you'd think for something. Well, that it's tall. a unibody. It's not. It's right. not. Yeah. Body it's, on it's a frame. crossover with like a short truck bed in it. So it drives. It's the Baja. Yeah, it yes, drives like basically. a really nice. Yeah. yeah. As, as I spit. It's By the, the way, the, yeah, it drives great. Have you seen what a used Baja goes for? Mm-mm. People will not give those things up, and a used Baja is like a twenty thousand dollar car, really? like an 05 Subaru Baja in yellow. <laughs> is like a twenty five thousand dollar car. I'd rather have the brat. It's from my cold dead oh, hands. Those are people. cool. I'd but rather those have rear the brat. Seats yeah. that are unsafe as hell. Yeah, the, you know why they put those rear seats? Because they get around the, the tax, the mm-hmm. chicken, chicken tax. tax. Yeah. yeah, and they have these jump these handles. Like hold on, yeah, the <laughs> death <laughs> handles. Yeah. Like this is going to do something. How strong are you? Did Not you um, the dislocate your shoulder handles? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be a pussy, Danielle. Hold on. The Santa Cruz looks nice though. It's it looks fun. You pimp it all out. It's like forty grand. That's Low cheap now for truck pump. standards. Well, with the chip shortage, but come on. But I mean, you, but it depends on what you. If you get everything, if you want just like, you know, normal Bluetooth stuff and cruise and everything, and be like 30, I, you know what I want, and I, I don't know if it's an option when you put the the, the um, uh, blind spot camera in the dash. I thought was kind of cool. That's very cool. Oh yeah, yeah. Hyundai put, does they, that in a bunch of their cars yeah. now. I yeah, that works really That's well. useful. I like. Yeah. I'd rather a camera than something that dings at me. I I like the light. The camera. I know. I know what I'm going to do. I'll be like. Where do you think you're going, you son of a bitch? And now I'm looking down. My eyes are off the road, and I'm yelling at the guy in the lane. Oh I got so aggressively boxed out of a spot the other day. I got a, you're going to have to crash into me if you want to get in this lane. 
and it was to like it was like for nothing. It was for one, you know, yeah. one to be one car up. Mm-hmm. And and man did this woman and it was like a real economy, you know, eco folk. It wasn't it might not have been a Prius, but it was right. something very Prius like C Max. Something mm-hmm. some uh, some inoffensive. Mm-hmm. And it and and I signaled and I went to move and it was boom right in there. You're not getting this spot from me, Mister. All right, right. I got this is this was Rutledge Wood's favorite story. Or one one night when I snap because I have he's got a couple of snap stories. I got a rent a car. There's an S class Mercedes. I'm going through the, the Midtown Tunnel, and you know you do the the zipper. The zipper. Got to do right? the zipper. Got to do the zipper. It's unspoken zipper. You know. It's not even unspoken. I think they teach it. It's spoken. Do. Well, do it. It's spoken. Well, whoever they spoke, they didn't speak to the guy in the S <laughs> class that pissed everybody. me off. Okay. In Russia, yeah, we don't zipper. Here's me in the rent car. Buttons. Here's the guy in the S class with the smoke. That it's summertime, right? His sunroof is up because I see the vape coming out, and it's this, and we're, and I'm clearly I'm in the I'm in the zipper mode. I it's my zipper. He comes in. I just roll down the window. I go, this is a rented car with full insurance. For twenty four ninety nine. I'm going to ruin your fucking day. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Boom. I mean, there, there's the freedom in that. Yeah. I, I've been there, not just with rental cars. Recently, I was driving a press car, uh-huh. and I, I think it might have been that TRX, as a matter of fact, with like four of my friends in the back, and we're driving down Washington, and someone just tries to dive out in front of me, uh-huh. and I'm and I'm in this giant fucking 700-horsepower behemoth, and I don't like cut them off. I just proceed about my journey, uh-huh. and I just, I just casually mention to my friends, they don't know this ain't my fucking truck. <laughs> <laughs> and, and just, you know, and I became TRX man. That's right. I am TRX man. I got out of a ticket in a press car coming home from, you know, Scott Black from Shelby? Oh, yeah. So, Scott, uh, I did the, the the bash they have at the uh, in Vegas at the the Shelby Museum. So, they, they're very sweet to me. They send me, we'll fly in. I go, or send me something cool to do. Yeah, yeah, that's the right. That's the right response. Yeah, goes, to okay, that. great. So, they sent me, a, I think it was the GT350 mm-hmm. before the Mach 1 came out. Yeah. So. Lovely car. Yeah, it was great. It was like it was. It, it's at the rev match. I really like the car. So I'm driving home, and you know, when you come from Vegas, you're, you're hammered down. I get off the oh, 405, yeah. uh, right on Sunset. I made that turn, and I'm still, you know. You have to de. You have to Ding. decompress. Yeah. from the drive. Yeah. Yes, but I'm still. I took the current turn. I didn't slide it, but yeah, yeah. you know, I didn't do it timidly. Yeah. So and boop, cop pulls me over, pulls up, license and registration. It's a press car, so it's got. The, it's here's, got a whole bunch of my license, shit. all kinds of stuff. He goes, what kind of car is that? I say, it's a press car. It's like, you know, sir, I'm driving home from Vegas. I, I totally understand. I was speeding. I'm sorry, but this is a press car. He's like, well, where's the... I go, it's a press car. He's like, he, it wasn't... They don't know what that is. All, you know what he knows? He, he's like, I don't want to do the paperwork. Yeah. Be careful. Yeah. Boom. <laughs> yeah. That's what it was. pulled over in <laughs> like no a, idea to fill the fucking paperwork. Yeah. In like a pre-production car, like with an M plate on it, mm-hmm. like a full manufacturer, like no VIN, yet, like yeah. the VIN you're is like zero, zero, zero. You're handing him the Maroney. Yeah. And they're <laughs> like... I don't understand what to do with this. Yeah. I cannot. I got the, when the 911 Turbo S came out, the 992. Mm-hmm. It was right in the middle of COVID, like April 2020. They dropped the car off of my house, you know, and they're like, oh, we're going to leave the keys in the mailbox. We don't want to be within 20 feet of you, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. kind of thing. And the, it's outside with the hazards on, you know, <laughs> come outside in 30 seconds. You know, we're leaving. We're, we're going to hit the fogger in the car and then fucking go. <laughs> so I get in the car and I go up to the 10 mm-hmm. up here on Pico. I, uh, and I turn right onto the 10 freeway, and it's it was at that time when the, you could have a fucking dinner party in the middle of the freeway. Yeah. Empty. So I just turn on the entrance ramp, and I do three to four seconds of full throttle on the entrance ramp. And then I coast out of it. Mm-hmm. I, I just coast it off throttle, coast it down. 45 seconds later, there's a F-350, the fucking light, and they pull me over, I pull over, get out of the car, keys on the roof. Like, oh shit, here we go. (laughs) Do you know how hard it was for me to catch you? Well, you're in an F-350, sir, I can guess. Yeah, yeah. You know, do you know, I hate that when they go, do you know what we had to do to Mm -hmm. catch, uh, you know how dangerous I had to drive to catch up to you? Yeah. Well, was it worth it? Because uh, I wasn't being dangerous at all. Anyway. They thought I stole, it's on Jersey Tags, they thought I stole the car, 
you know, and I go, where did you get this car? It belongs to Porsche. And, da, 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 da. and it's like a pre-production. It was a German spec car. <laughs> it's right hand drive. It's just got all this weird, the speedos in kilometers. <laughs> yeah. Just like all this weird, the, the, the corner markers are all different, all this mm. stuff. The VIN is fucking not coming up in their system. And like literally they, they were like, we could arrest you right now, but we have absolutely no idea what to do with the yeah. car. And like, and they wrote me an enormous ticket, uh, uh, but they let me go. It's okay. Offtherecord.com slash TST mm. handled. Off the record, handled it. Disappeared. Great. Never heard a peep again. You know why? Because they had nothing. Damn. No radar. They didn't have a vehicle that could oh. pace me. No laser. Oh. All they had was, do you know how fast I had to do to catch up yeah. to you? That's all they you had. You were speeding. So were you, officer. So were you. Well, you could have done I like, won't well, say the train leaves Chicago 20 minutes before the other train. <laughs> yeah. I got yeah. the night, the most politest guy gave me a ticket going up to, my big drive is from, from here to San Francisco because I got in-laws up there, right? So you're on the five, and you want to outrun the smell of cow shit. So you're on. Yeah, right. You know that, and you see that exit coming. You gotta yeah. hit that recirc button. Oh god, you gotta race it. Poof. <laughs> so I'm. I I'm have on. an alert set on my phone. So whenever I get within the GPS range, yeah, hit recirc. Yeah, it's ready. And why? Why does it stay on? That's what I, you gotta keep. Mine keeps going off. And once I the hit recirc, it, yeah, doesn't re stay on. It doesn't stay on. Your car's broken. It's not broken. It's, I think it's broken. Believe me, I. Uh, my, <laughs> I'm, I'm driving, so I'm driving, on, right? Should. And I get, I got the, uh, I got the Valentine one, uh -huh. right? Brap, brap, brap. And I, yeah. Don't worry, honey, those are just the electric doors on the mall. Brap, brap, brap. Boop. No, they weren't. <laughs> <laughs> Cop pulls me over, and I, I was hammering. He's like, he goes, man, you were almost doing hundred. I said, eh. He's like, uh, <laughs> three digits is. Just, I'm going to write you up for eighty five, which is what fifteen over. Yeah. Was. He goes, and he comes back. He's like, listen, pay the ticket. Uh, do online travel school. It won't affect your insurance. And yeah. he's, he's telling me, he's like, we need the money. <laughs> goes, yes. Pay us. We this need the money. This is a financial we, scam. We, and, we, uh, we yeah. don't want to fuck your insurance. Here's how you get out of it. I'm like, all right, great. Thank you. I went up. I did the, while I was at my mother-in-law's, I was sitting there. I had, I had bourbon. I was sitting there with a yeah. bourbon just doing the online test. Yeah. That online cool. school, it's, it's, it's fine, except there's those minimums where mm. you must stay on the page for at least yeah. 20 minutes before you can click the answer and move do on. Do you cover the camera? I, my camera's covered, so I, honey, oh. sit here. I gotta pee. Seriously. <laughs> oh, I don't think it. I don't know if it watches you. It might. It might just make you keep. The I'm page Italian. Up. We don't. We I've think got, everyone's watching. I have this <laughs> this sponsor for this show, Off the Record. Mm -hmm. If you go to offtherecord.com/tst, you'll never have to do anything like that ever again. Really? They just handle all of it. I'm going. Yeah, yeah. If you ever get pulled over, ever, mm -hmm. don't get plead guilty or any of that shit. Just text me and be like, "What's that website again?" Yeah. And I'll tell you. Off the record. So what happens when they pull you over? You go, okay. No, you know, well, you do, sign the acknowledgement that you've been pulled over, but okay. you don't have to plead guilty on the side of the road. You okay. just scan the ticket and submit it to the site, and then they send a lawyer, and it goes away. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. They've made shit. They make shit disappear. It's great. I got an uncle that does that. Yeah, you got you got a family member for everything. Yeah, that's what happens when you're Italian. Yeah, well, and you got a big family. You're. Uh, <laughs> I like your. Uh, your insinuations about your family. And it's, your new special. I, I mean, I, it just comes with being Italian, doesn't it? It comes with, that's the culture I grew up in. You know, they, they're not criminals. They're not, look, no one's getting killed in my family. It's a fine line between tough guy and criminal. Yeah, but even tough guy is bullshit. Yeah. It's all like, you know, it's like, look, if something falls off a truck, <laughs> we're not putting it back. <laughs> but no one's getting. That's know. just a gift from the environment. That's it. Yeah. It's like God given furniture. It's a, it's a Couch, <laughs> this will fit in the ute. Pick it up, honey. <laughs> We but used that, to buy fucking stolen car stereo shit in Canal Street back did? in the day. Yeah, it was good. Okay, you know what we used to do? You remember the Columbia Record and Tape Club? Oh, yeah, where you'd sign up for get a penny. Yeah. you get all these albums. Right, yeah. We'd get all of them, and then when they would stop sending it to your address, we'd send them to the neighbor's address, and then we'd go to the Tri-County Flea Market on Long Island and just sell them. They were still wrapped up. We'd just smart. sell it. Very smart. Yeah, and you knew the code at the Tri-County Flea Market on Long Island. You knew the code of the guy that had fireworks. You know, he had a code. If you if you knew the guy, oh, the secret he's like, word. Is this all you got? Can I? You see know the holidays the, coming. And you're going can back. Can I see the fruit? That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have the seeded fruit? Mmm, eighty. Yeah. We used to get. <laughs> we used to get those on Canal Street too. Yeah. We'd go in the back of the of the of the car stereo place, mm -hmm. and they would have the fireworks. They'd have the stolen car stereo shit in the front, the fireworks in the back. Jeez. It was actually pretty wild. Because they, they would sell, I mean, in hindsight, 
we were children. <laughs> like, yeah. they, they would really Selling just children. Sell, yeah. Fireworks. Are and they stolen. still there? The car stereo places, definitely. And are. yet Toys R Us has gone yeah. under. So Toys R Us children And Crazy be. Eddie. Is where oh, you would get Crazy stuff. Eddie, crazy yeah. Eddie. Went yeah. to jail. Did he go to jail? Yeah. For what? He was, it was embezzlement. <laughs> <laughs> what else? Yeah, embezzlement. <laughs> We also had uh, Bob's insane, Furniture, the Bobopedic. Yeah. Mass- I, we got a Bobopedic. Yeah. It was legit. It was. That guy straight up ripped off Temper Pedic and sold that shit for half the price and got a Bobopedic mattress. Jesus. It was legit. That guy still probably has commercials, I think. I, I remember it, but it wasn't that long ago. He no, no. Out. No, no. This is like ongoing. Yeah. Is, is the Bobopedic it's still a thing? Yup. Oh, yes. <laughs> MyBobs.com. I'll do a free commercial for this motherfucker. <laughs> Bob Opedic is a thing. <laughs> oh, before I forget, have you driven the uh, the Blackwing, the CT? No, but we, no, we just there. It was weird. They had a they had a launch like in Detroit. Mm-hmm. They invited people. They invited us. We couldn't make it. But then they were like, "Look, I'm sorry, but it's going to be a really long time before the cars come to LA." Uh huh. And I just, I spoke to the guy in October and he said, I'm sorry, the cars aren't there yet. And I just, like five minutes before you got here, we were putting together our January schedule and I hit Uh the guy up. I'll see if he replied after we're done with the show. Yeah, I, that's, that's my favorite car. One of my favorite cars. You drove it? I haven't driven it. I want to drive the new one. I drove, when, so Top Gear first comes out, they send the V to my house. I'm driving. The best. Trying to convince my wife. That this and is, you got a cool wife. I, Your I, wife is, in, is into fast cars. Yeah, she is. She, she, I met her. She had a Ferrari. Yeah, and I was like, all right. So I, I, she's like, it's an old Italian car. I go, no, honey, this is a luxury sport van. <laughs> I'm on Wilshire Boulevard. <laughs> you had to explain understeer. The and, Alpha chassis. Yeah, I was going to say, listen, wag the tail a little bit. <laughs> so I'm, I'm at a stoplight trying to convince her it's not an old Gindaloons car. Car pulls up next to me, window goes down, head comes out. So do you like it? <laughs> it's Joey Pantaleone. No way. I swear to God. I go, yeah. He pulls away. I said, don't even look at me, honey. Just don't even look at me. <laughs> yeah. I, I this, love that uh, car. This old M3, mm-hmm. old new M3. It's a 2005, but it's got like no miles on it. It's right. brand fucking new. And it's, you know, at, at pretty much first, second, and third glance, if you don't like know how many miles are on it, Zach mm-hmm. will dig in. There it is. It's mint, but it's a fucking silver 15 year old BMW. Yeah. It's not like. Tanner had that one. He did he have did. one of yeah. those. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but it's like. It's a silver BMW. It's not like, you know, it's not like it's a new fucking yeah. Ferrari or anything. But in the last three days, I had one guy pull up next to me to light two nights ago. Hey, hey. And I put the window and he goes, cuz, 10 out of 10. <laughs> 10 out of 10. <laughs> and I go, oh, thanks. I just got it. He goes, how many miles on that? I go, 15,000. He goes, cuz. <laughs> That's 10 out of 10. <laughs> and he really hung on this 10 out of yeah. 10 thing. And I was like, well, thank you very much. And went on. As I'm driving at home yesterday, Coming up in my rear three quarter, there's a Tesla Model Three swerving, mm. swerving on like I even like inch over in my lane because this motherfucker is swerving. He's got the phone up like this, and it from in my rear view mirror, I'm like, this motherfucker's on a Facetime. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Because people drive around on fucking Facetime now, Fuck. and I'm like, this dude is on a Facetime. I slow down and realize this dude's videoing me. Yeah. I'm like, and then I'm like, oh, I'm not even mad anymore. This dude just thinks my shit is dope. Yeah. I and he rolls it. He, he crashes rolls, into you. You're like, hey, thanks. He rolls it down. He rolls his window down. And I want to be like, put your fucking phone down. And he goes, dude, I never see him that clean. Never. And then just moves on. And I'm like, I can't even be mad at this fucking yeah. guy. Yeah. <laughs> but when you, but dude, I get that excited too when I can, I, I will find somebody and chase them down on the highway just to go, dude, this is fucking beautiful. Dude, I'll, I'll be that guy and it's a 93 Roadmaster. Yeah. <laughs> Like the wood is still there. Yeah. <laughs> you vista the roof, motherfucker. There's yeah. a there's a someone stole one of my photos on Instagram and made a meme mm-hmm. out of it. And I was driving a Ferrari press car and took a picture of a '93 Roadmaster. <laughs> and I just posted like, "Yes, I'm the guy driving this four hundred thousand dollar Ferrari, right. taking pictures of a fucking Roadmaster." And people misinterpreted that as me 
uh, you know, if you didn't, if you knew it was me, right. then it's funny. Mm -hmm. If you didn't know it was me, it's like this asshole's bragging about his four hundred thousand dollar car, like it was a press car. Yeah, like but it's not it mine. Beca it became a it became a meme when I got no credit mm -hmm. and called an asshole by a bunch of people. But I but I, the 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 shittier the car, yeah, you know what I mean. If it was a an Oldsmobile silhouette, one of those dustbuster <laughs> vans, yeah. I'm chasing that motherfucker up the street. Mm -hmm. Like why do why do you still have this? Yeah. <laughs> A ranchero, dude. There's people. I mean, I I saw like a Dodge, like a Shelby Aries the other yeah. day, and I was yeah. like, oh my god, you the silver and blue <laughs> with the blue stripes on it. Yeah, and it says like the Shelby yeah. fabric with in the, it, and that that stupid Dodge Triangle. I had my I had an '81 K car when my grandfather died. Really? That was the car that I had for school because I got it. Uh, I was on the dead relatives inheritance program. <laughs> He died. <laughs> I was the next one. I get the K car, which is crap with a K. But I could park it in the teacher's lot because who the fuck could drive it? It was, a, it was an Aries yeah. K or a Reliant K? No, it was K? an Aries. Aries K? Dodge Aries K. Two door. Two door. There it is. Ooh. White velour interior. Oh, God. That is awful. just the most tragic looking, awful. <laughs> looking car. You can't believe it. And my but grandmother would charge me. came with a turbo. Remember they had a turbo, yeah. the 600? <laughs> Your hey, grandmother that, charged you for my it. My grandmother, yeah. Listen, you're paying the estate yeah. tax on this. All right, give me too large. Take the car. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> All right. We have uh, here at uh, here at Westside. Mm. It's actually been a surprisingly not. I mean, I guess I shouldn't have been surprised, but what? it's been a surprisingly high number of cars that we have had come through here that are inherited inherited cars. True. You know, like. So, so, no one's know. selling cars anymore because of the chip shortage. No one's. Yeah, well, they, like people, if your father dies mm -hmm. and leaves you a Ferrari five nine nine, and you don't know anything about cars, right? What the fuck are you gonna do with it? Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't know, but you're gonna stick it somewhere like this until you can figure it out. Until you figure it out. Yeah, you're gonna call a bunch of local dealers right. to try to sell it. They're gonna lowball the shit out of you. And then you're going to stick it somewhere like this until you can figure out what to actually do with it. So what, what's the coolest thing you've had come in? On inheritance? Yeah. The Ferrari 599. Okay. <laughs> That's what's here now. All right. We had uh, an NSX, ah. uh, nine, a really nice 98 NSX that I told the the, per the bereaved, mm -hmm. you know, I said, look, if you ever, if you ever want to get rid of this thing, I said, I will, I will make you a reasonable offer mm -hmm. for it because it was really cool. Right. Okay. Um, it was a Bentley... Uh, we've got a Boxster in here that someone was in, had inherited. Mm. Of the, some some random stuff. Right. Yeah. I want the NSX. I like. I was like ninety eight NSX was very nice. The one. What was the one in uh, in Pulp Fiction that? Uh, you know the story about that car? No. There's an intro, There's a backstory about that car. Uh, he's the only about that car when he goes. This is the directionals work. I don't want to get pulled over. Right. Okay. Fine. Follow me. I drive fast. I drive <laughs> fast. Yeah. Okay. Wait. What's weird is what the weirdest thing about that mm -hmm. is that at one point Harvey Keitel offers Jules and Vince. He's already taken that chick out to breakfast. Yeah, he then offers Jules and Vince a ride. Mm -hmm. He has an NSX. Yeah, where are they going to sit? I don't know. Where exactly in the car are they? And he's like, "Where do you live? Oh, uh, Inglewood, Redondo. I see a taxi cab. Yeah, but where were they going to fucking sit? Okay." But interesting thing about that car, Honda paid placement in that movie. Sure. Did you know that? I, I'm assuming they paid yeah. for the NSX, mm -hmm. but also um, Bruce Willis's chick drives a little old Civic, okay. which is was a paid placement wow. also. That I didn't know. And there's another one too. Did they too. read the script first? Because then it shows up and there's like Uzis and I think the not like, I think the fucking weird Nazi guy's motorcycle was also a Honda. The Zed, chopper. Zed is dead. Zed. Ooh. I think Zed's bike might have been a Honda. There was a third. There were three Hondas. I forget where the third one is. Okay. But but uh, Brad Brownell, who writes for Jalopnik and whatever. Just did a story about, um, oh, it's a Harley FXR? Okay, not a Honda. But there is a third Honda somewhere in there. Um, so Brad Brownell, who writes for Jalopnik, just did a story about this 91 NSX press car that's still in Honda's fleet mm -hmm. that was shoved in the back of a warehouse and forgotten about for a really, really long time. And it's without... Literally getting into Quentin Tarantino's personal files to find out. There's almost no way to find out for sure. Mm. But the Acura Honda people think that it was the car from Pulp Fiction that's still that they actually still own. 
Wow. Yeah, and apparently it is still in the fleet. And if you it, apparently if you want to get pretty up close and personal with this car, you could definitely drive it for a weekend, a hundred percent. If you wanted to drive that car, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty. I cool. liked. I liked. I always liked that car. The, have you driven one before? I've driven one when it, when they first came out. But they're fucking been, great. They're fun. They're really nice, nice low, cars. But they're not. It's like. They they really ba- I, f- I find it to be balanced for me. Yeah, really and the nice. controls are very light, and yeah. like the it's got that real supercar you know yeah. forward view. Mm-hmm. They're comfortable. Yeah, well, Honda has one in the press fleet that they've let a lot of people drive. The it, silver O five, like that's you, an O five. You could probably get that for a week. Yeah, and it's you know it's it's in pretty good condition. It rides pretty well. Like they they made the stereo like they gave it aftermarket guts in the back, so mm-hmm. the volume knob doesn't turn anything. But mm-hmm. you have to like adjust it other, in another way. But otherwise. Runs, drives great. Yeah. They're, they're so nice. Like that car driving to Vegas, it would be incredibly comfortable. That's my, yeah. yeah really like nice. I'm driving up to, uh, I got to go back to um, San Francisco. We're going to go for, for Christmas. So I was looking for something fun. Ooh. That'd be fun. You yeah. still got that LS? I do, yeah. That thing rules. I love really that nice car. LS. It's yeah. a great LS. I'm still, look, thank you. I'm, I'm still, I still, I, I you, you talked me out of putting a Borla on it. I wanted to give it a little no, bit No, no, don't do that. I know, I know. Because the whole virtue of that car is that it's quiet. Yeah. You don't want to make it sound. Yeah, I know. I, no. like, I like a rumble. I mean, it would be very like Goomba of you to oh, ruin it. Of course it, it is. <laughs> it's like my Buick. I split the. I split. The, I don't have headers in it because it ain't that kind of car. But I got. I got dual exhaust. They sound good with exhaust though. The LS four hundred. Yeah, you could put something on it. They yeah, sound good, but it. like you do don't want to. You don't come do on. You don't want to do fucking it. do that, man. It's all murdered out now. I drive around like the Yakuza. I remember when you came over last time. We're like. Is this your car? Like, yeah, yeah and it runs forever and it's super comfortable. Runs forever. Yeah, I did the, the, the only thing I do at ninety eight thousand around there, the timing belt. Yeah, which every hundred k. Yeah, yeah. So you do that. So that I one I had, I did, the, I did the ninth timing belt change yeah. on it because when I had fucking nine hundred k, we had to do it. Okay. What else do you own? I got that. I, I had the. Old, I sold the Buick I got from Top Gear. My my Deuce and a quarter. That was fun. We talk about cars that people like follow you to go. This guy would follow him, and it would diesel. I had to turn it off in, in neutral because it kept. Do- if you oh yeah, oh really? It kept <laughs> That's the worst sound, isn't it? Yeah, it's like, blah, 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 blah. Oh god. So this and it was the big four fifty five. So it was it was like it was like your aunt coughing with like a parliament. Co- <laughs> da, da. I always equate that shit with like the Uncle Buck LTD. Yeah. Remember the LTD yeah, from yeah. Uncle Buck? The like, bang. Yeah. That's fucking god. There's it. one in my neighborhood. An really? old brown Ford LTD around the corner. There's and the chicken car, the Olds ninety eight. Well, that's Tommy Kendall's That's Tommy's car. Kendall's. It's, 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 you see that driving around. He parks on the street. Yeah. He parks it on the friggin' street. There's a guy with a 59 Eldorado he parks on the street. Whoa. And I'm like, what, the, what is wrong with you? It's like 80 feet long. I want to go out and get cones and just put it around there. I love yeah. I love that the, the car that you call it a deuce and a quarter, because what we're referring to is overall length in inches. Yeah. It is. 18 <laughs> feet, 5 inches, baby. That's a deuce and a quarter. We had, you know, we had one of those down downstairs. Uh, uh, you know who owns it, actually? The guy mm. who sells our ads. Really? Yeah. David from PMM the actually two-door? has an Electra. It's a 64. Okay. Two, two, tw- Electra 225. Yeah, that's a 70. Yeah, it was the it was the generation before yours, but mm. it was enormous. Oh, it's huge. Yeah, yeah. And it's the same. That's the coupe. <laughs> You know, that's the fucking coupe. Yeah, if you did it in sections, it'd be like two thirds of the car is like not actually usable space. Yeah. <laughs> you have to signal for a turn a week in advance in that thing. Yeah, yeah. You so, what, so you have the Lexus. You got this little. And E-class I got, you I got an 08 E350. That's it. That's it. Keep it simple. Okay, well, I, I want the next thing I want because I, I sold that. The next thing I want is I was looking at a '63 Lincoln. Yeah. Um, Conti. Yeah. 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 But. Um, when I was at Barrett Jackson, there was, and I like this car. I I love the the bullet car, uh-huh. but I like the '67 better than the '68. Uh-huh. It's not as '68's a little chunky. Yeah, '67 yep. sleeker for me. Uh-huh. And there was a guy that did a, a restaurant, so it worked, of a '60 of uh, the '67 Highland Green. You did the, it the like rims. the bullet car? Did it like that it was a replica? And I was like, this is fucking Momo wheel. It was a big cue ball shifter. It was yeah. really, really nice. I like a 67 Mustang. It's a really nice, fast really yeah. nice looking car. They got car. the proportions right in 60. Because 66, yeah. the, the back rake was, mm-hmm. was just a little off. Yeah, see, that's that's the right look right there. See, but that's the 68. That's chunky. You know, Which see, one is the... That's the 68. Oh, here to the event. left is the 67? The C-pillar vent, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a little tighter on yeah. the 67. Yeah. A little swoopier. Yeah. Yeah. That's nice. That's good stance right there too. I mean, yeah, bullet replica for sure. If they're set up well, they drive awesome. Like Sam mm-hmm. Smith, he owned a GT350 replica. He yeah. writes for Haggerty and a bunch of other things. Mm-hmm. He used to track it and stuff, and he just says they're so 
they're so much more advanced in terms of driving dynamics mm-hmm. compared to the competitors of the day. Right. Yeah, you should do. That. I, I mean, but I would do up. stuff like like the I'm, I'm putting Ricardo, I'm putting seats in it because yeah. it's got. You know. Yeah, yeah, that's a good you, idea. Because you, you know? like walking. <laughs> Yeah. I like to keep doing yeah, that. I don't need drum breaks. Yeah. You know, I just, you know. I got to have a go in Parnelli Jones's 1970 Mustang race car. How's on that? The track. Insane. Yeah. Insane. Imagine a car like that, but they take the power steering out of it. It's okay. Like, yeah. You know, and then it had a motor that came on cam from 5,000 to 8,500 RPM. You Jesus. had to keep it. It was, there it is, it was that car. The red one. Wow. Fucking nasty. That's big. It was really, really, really cool. Really yeah. cool. That's not even a big one. The Mach 1 was bigger than that. Yeah. The Mach 1 with the big Cobra jet in it, Yeah, that's a, he- that's a heavy co- fucking hammer. It's an aircraft carrier. Car. Yeah, yeah. When I grew up, the guy the guy who worked on, on my Mustang when I was in high school, he had a 65 289, mm-hmm. and then he had a, a Mach 1 also. Both just mint. But he let me have a little go in them. The 69 was big. Yeah. It was a big car. Well, it was weird because the... The 69s got bigger, but the, the 69 Camaro got smaller. Right. The 67 and 68 were bigger cars. But then you had a 73 Mustang, which was like as yeah. long as your fucking Buick. Yeah. That was like the, the low point. Yeah. I was it, like, then it, the Mustang 2 came out. Just not like, so bad. Not so good. Should be the Mustang number 2. So it's not so good. A piece of shit. The Mustang 2. The Bronco 2 has aged well. Of, two, mm. of twos. Mm. Bronco 2 was just a Ranger SUV. Yeah. With a cap. Yeah. That... That seventy one seventy three Mustang is heinous. Yeah, looking. The, yeah. This whole front end. Oh, especially in the this, notchback is terrible. Yeah, the, the notchback coupe. with the Landau roof is no bueno. Ick, no bueno at ick, all. Ick, ick, ick. Have you been over to the uh, Peterson and seen the James Bond exhibit? I wanted to go with you. I wanted to do the That's James Bond cool. episode um, with uh, uh, what well, I was talking about the James Bond cars. So it I was wanted pretty to go. cool. They yeah. got a bunch of them over there. Yeah, they, they had got DB five. Yeah, they got the a bunch of different Bond cars, and then they have a bunch of, like, villain cars, too. Mm. And they have, like, helicopters and boats <laughs> and submarines. All kinds of crazy shit over yeah. there. It's a very good, very as far as Hollywood exhibits go, right. it, they've done it really nice. Cool. And they have that Mustang that they went up on two wheels from the, Which the one? Vegas one. Mm. Uh, search James Bond Mustang. It's kind of unique. It's got, like... It's very 70s. It's got some, I can't remember which movie it is, but it's got some right. swirly, paisley shit on the side. Yeah, the one that goes up on two wheels from, what movie is this? Uh, it's that, a Mach there 1. It is. Ma- Diamonds are Forever. Right. It's a Mach 1. Yeah, they do the, the two wheel stunt. Which that they, thing is big. Look at that. Look at the side view of that. Look how look heinous that, that car is. God, the Ooh, look are at so bad. that. <laughs> That's an awful looking that's, car. That's <laughs> that's a Maserati Bora without you know, the charm. Actually, it it looks like they cheapened the Bora, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Good call, Adam. It really does look like they went for a Bora but didn't have the money they to have the have money. It styled properly. And, they, and it's not rear engine. Yeah. <laughs> you get the, the coolest thing about the Bora was it, whoop, yeah. the back of it opened up. Boras were badass. Yeah. They were they're very valuable now. There, especially the big engines, the 4.9s. Mm-hmm. There was some legend about this guy in L.A. who had a Bora and he and he had fucking turbos put on it, and he used to race his buddies to to Palm Springs or something. Really? Yeah, it was like some Sinatra era shit. Uh, Very cool looking car, though. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. you could it's, see it's, how the Ford would have tried to been like, oh yeah, make well, it kind of like that. They put the Pantera is like kind of in the same yep. family. Very similar looking. You ever drive one of those? They drive good. Yeah, really? one that's like not been fucked up is drives pretty good. That, where do you find them? That's very not rare. been fucked up. Yeah, very rare. They came off the fact. Like, Does it work? Kinda. <laughs> It's a I, 351. I drove one that was like impeccably restored and gone mm-hmm. through and perfect, and it drove very European. Mm-hmm. It was really nice, yeah. a lot like one of these Maseratis. I did. I the Bora was. Uh, I mean the uh, the Pantera was like was one of those cars. You're like ooh, that's cool. I wonder if they're ever gonna. I, I guess if they were gonna have their day, it mm-hmm. would have happened already, right? <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? Said. Yeah, like. It's not like all of a sudden people are going to realize that now! that's the fucking yeah. thing to have, is it? Yeah. Now it's like, now I think I think vi- early Vipers are about to have a moment. Because mm-hmm. uh, people like me are like, ooh, those Still are- scary, though. The Fuck, brakes, yeah, they- the early ones with the brakes are yeah, kind of there. Shit, but like, I love it. I love when there's a commitment mm. to no roof. I love yeah, when there's the a roadsters. commitment to no windows. When Chip it's does like, that. Foose does that a yeah. lot. Yeah. 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 When it's like windows, <laughs> fucking pussy. You got goggles. <laughs> yeah. 
Like, Zach, put on a scarf. There's no heater in <laughs> like this. Like the 550 Barquetta Ferrari. Like, no roof. No yeah. problem. Yeah. Fuck it. Deal what with it. What was the car you were telling me about that there's no windshield but the air? Oh, the Elva. McLaren the, Elva. Elva, yeah. yeah. With the air the air dam thing. Yeah. That it's, can't work. It does. Really? Well, it works for air. All it right. doesn't work for rocks. Yeah, I was going to say. You know what I mean? Yeah. Anything lighter than a cigarette butt, you're good. <laughs> Anything heavier than a cigarette butt, you're taking it to yeah. the face. So, like, I, if I was driving it on the freeway, mm. 100% helmet. Yeah. Helmet, helmet, helmet. Got it. Because a rock to the face, you're having a Done. bad day. But if you're on a canyon road mm. and you're not behind anybody, you know what I mean, and you've got the road to yourself, take the helmet off, incredible. Mm. It's like flying a glider. Because it but don't your eyes tear up or no? Because it's well, I would I would probably put sunglasses on. Yeah. But like, like it. Imagine driving a convertible, regular convertible with a windshield, mm. except the windshield's not there. That's what it feels like. Because the thing, it's it's a yeah. See, it's kind of an it's not an attractive. Um, mechanism that mm. flap it's like a TV no. rising out of your dresser it is it's like, yeah. it's like, a, it's like yeah. a Vegas hotel room TV <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, but it actually does work and so you can drive and if you put your hand up like here mm -hmm. it's like a hurricane right. but here it's totally calm and, it, and, you, know, and just, you know what just for the, th that they made that work it's is, cool. It's cool. What I, I mean, they're not they're not selling these very well. Well, well it's, it's a thing. It's we, a novelty. Yeah, we made it work. Yeah. But that's about it. But it's, in terms of like, you know, an experience, Yeah, it's an experience I, that doesn't exist anywhere I else. I love that engineering stuff. It's like the, the Ford GT, the exhaust mm -hmm. comes out through the taillight. Yeah. They vented through the taillight. But just some guy was sitting there going, what about the taillight? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Aren't they going to melt, Bob? Like, we'll figure it out. We'll I love back in the 50s when they used to find weird places to, to yeah. send the exhaust out, too. The, yeah. uh, or the, the gas Volks caps. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. No, the gas cap. You know, the gas cap behind the, the 50, license plate. 50, the 54 50, Caddy yep. was in the taillight. In the taillight. They had the uh, the pressure from the uh, the Volkswagen for the uh, the window cleaner. They, they put a hose right on the spare tire. So they would take the, the, the air out of the tire. Get the fuck out yeah. of here, really? They don't come right up. Yeah. And then what happened when you needed the flat tire? You're walking. <laughs> Your windshield's clean, but it's you're walking. Limited. Yeah. I guess yeah. you're expected to top off the spare tire, huh? Well, right. I guess, you know, no one's, how much how much of that <laughs> pressure. <laughs> How many? How often do you clean your window? It depends where you live. More often than you break down. More often than you need a flat yeah. tire. Yeah, that but is that the kind of thing that you definitely would forget until you that actually. Is a, that is a it. very knowing what Volkswagen did later with the uh, air actuated door locks that mm. also broke. Like that yeah. seems like something they would do. Yeah, but then they have the stuff. That, remember the Caddy with the the, the four six eight cylinder oh, reduction? God, yeah, Jesus. Well, they figured this out eventually. Yeah. We just we've driven a bunch of different cars that have cylinder deactivation mm -hmm. now, and it works. Yeah, it didn't work. What did then. I just drive? We just I just drove something that should have been very. Oh, the Mercedes. What the the um the the AMG GT Black Series has cylinder deactivation. For efficiency. So, mm -hmm. interesting story about cylinder deactivation. My girlfriend's stepdad has a Jeep SRT. Okay. And he got an aftermarket exhaust for it. He's like, so excited. He puts it on, drives it home. He's like, ooh, this thing sounds great. And then he gets on the highway and starts to drone like crazy. Oh. Because of because cylinder of deactivation. Cylinder deactivation. So, he, he returned um. the exhaust and uh, he ended up calling a dealership to like talk to them about it. And the guy goes, the service guy says, you don't know how many people, he lives in Florida, mm. come in with aftermarket exhaust on their car and they say, my car is broken. It sounds weird. It's shifting strange. It's making all these weird fucking noises. And he had, the service manager said, I had to bet a guy that if he took his exhaust off and put it back to stock, if the problem didn't go away, he's like, I'll buy him a transmission. <laughs> so, 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 so this is the thing, like, aftermarket exhaust companies aren't mm -hmm. doing that same R&D the OEMs are doing. So when the cylinders turn off, their exhaust sounds fucking weird. Yeah, That's so funny. And I, bet you the, I bet you the aftermarket exhaust company, like, only ever tested in sport mode. Right. You know, they only do dyno and, like, mm -hmm. drag launches. They're, ne they're not going on a 300-mile eco road trip. I can, I've noticed that, especially in um, the SRT uh, models, you know, you can really hear it. Yeah. You can really hear, I mean, it's subtle, mm. you know, but you can hear it when it when it goes into the cylinder deactivation mode. It's, it, it, gets, it gets a little lame, yeah. you know, sounding. Mm. Mm. I'm, like, I'm sorry, you got a cold? But, like, 
No denying it works. For, it does work, you know, for efficiency. Yeah, but you're not going to buy it. Like, if I'm going to buy that Mercedes, I'm not looking for economy. Oh, I'm no. looking for... Well, so you can, if for. you put it in fucking sport mode, it doesn't do yeah. it. You just gotta, if it only comes on in, like, comfort mode. But, right. but, the, but because of the law, yeah. most vehicles have to start up mm-hmm. in the most efficient Efficiency. mode. Okay. So that's, you know, that's probably why. Have you, and I, I've only seen it on the internet, but the Lucid... Have we you? just drove it. And? Yeah. It's fucking cool. Jesus. It's what, really 1,100 cool. horsepower? So we drove it in the wet. Okay. And we drove in the canyons in the rain. And it does actually hook up. Like really? we we ran a 10 second quarter mile in the rain. Jesus. Um, It's fuck all fast. Corn- and it corners well in the rain. Like the grip is amazing. Yeah. And the ride is one of the best car- riding cars I've ever been. Yeah. The, the, the I- ride was really mind blowing. And the roof, did they have the glass roof? Yeah. Okay, here's my question for you. How was the cockpit? Because the A pillar is really thick because of the roof crashing stuff and the glass right. stuff. So it looks chunky on the pictures I saw. Honestly, the, the fact the that the windshield comes up, yeah. you know, like a Tesla Model X, it yeah. goes above your head. I thought the cockpit was bright and airy mm. and lovely. I think that's something that would present a problem turning like left in the city streets, you know, when you can't yeah. see the crosswalk. But I, that's kind of common with all cars today because the A pillars have gotten so thick because of tra- uh Crash well, I can't see out of a Camaro. No, a Camaro's well, like sl- driving yeah. a hoodie. It's it. Yeah. It's, it's like yeah. I'm, I'm chopping channel against yeah, my yeah. will. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, so we didn't get to like yeah, take this home and fuck around with it and go shopping right. and go in and out of parking lots and stuff like that. Just, we just we just got to take it for a nice couple of blasts up the canyon, and I hope to get some more seat time with it soon. And I've been talking to the folks there, and I think mm-hmm. we will. Um, but the steering, the ride, mm-hmm. the handling. How the do brakes Great. Great brake feels good. Yeah, the brake doesn't feel you know how like a lot of cars like when you when you it's like a two stage mm, braking yeah. system. It's <laughs> like regen and yeah. then this had a very smooth nice. transition. Although the regen has like extra and regular mm-hmm. and if you leave put on extra regen, it's aggressive. Okay. So we figured out in about a minute and a half of driving that maybe regular regen is about right and extra regen was pretty aggressive. But making it seamless like that is rare in the EV world, I think. Like, you know, uh, Porsche does a good job of it. Normally you feel that step. Porsche does it by having almost no regen. They pretty much, Porsche, Porsche's philosophy is coast. Yeah. Coast, coast, instead of regen. So Mm -hmm. they have like pretty much like regular sports car brakes on the Taycan. Because the Mercedes was like, you know, that was a little... Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Am I yeah. in the way? <laughs> <laughs> and my and my Ford Mach E mm-hmm. has the two the the two stage one too. Right. It's like a little a little less than ideal. Uh, this was very very good. This one, from what I was reading, is they got the motor, the differential, the the electronics all in that little package that weighs yeah. like 160 pounds or something. Well, like that's what little... what it what we've noticed and what we were kind of told and confirmed is that it's the exterior dimensions of an E class, mm-hmm. but the interior dimensions of an S class. Right. And that's because they were able to make everything else smaller. Yeah. So it's got a big front trunk. It doesn't have a hatchback, but it's got a pretty big rear but trunk. But it's low enough, so you're not picking stuff up. I mean, the, the no, trunk No, no, it's is, low. Yeah. It's, and I wish it had a full hatchback instead right. of just a regular trunk. But besides that, like tons of room. It was and, cool well, as fuck, It has fuck, the second man. trunk below the trunk. There's like a oh, yeah. trunk. Yeah. Like a well, like yeah. under yeah. the floor of the trunk yeah, is yeah. like another trunk. Yeah. It's they have the, they have awesome. that in the uh, in the Santa Fe they, with a drain plug, so you can use it as oh, a cool. You can use it as a cooler. My Mach E has that. The yeah. trunk you can. You, did you ever see the picture? Nah. You can you get the picture of the shrimp, the fuck, the, <laughs> the shrimp mock, in the trunk. You know, because there's like a trope about auto journalists uh-huh. and shrimp sure. eating shrimp. Oh, okay. we just go to eat the shrimp. They did. I think they were trolling us, but they. <laughs> They, did, they turned the That's front funny. of a Maki into like an enormous shrimp cocktail. <laughs> <laughs> and it's equal parts hilarious and disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> it's That's so great. gross. <laughs> what was the um, uh, the charging time on a Lucid? Because they said with the 800 volt charge, you They said get, like, 10 to 90 in 20 minutes mm-hmm. with a 350 kilowatt charger. Okay. Which, you know, you can't find those everywhere. Right. But they're around. They're the putting more. 800 on. kilowatt charge. They said you can get 300 miles in 20 minutes. Right. So those don't really exist yet. Yeah. They. I don't know. I think the fast. Can you look up the fastest public chargers in California? I don't know if they've got anything faster than a 350 okay. publicly available right now. Uh, does it say? Uh, fastest. What is the fastest EV charger? 
Uh, I don't know. I I have but never ra- seen anything. Oh here, uh, three fifty slash gear. I I've never seen one faster than a three fifty kilowatt. Okay. That's that'll do. I think three hundred miles in twenty minutes sounds mm-hmm. right. Okay. Because that would be that would be ten to ninety. Yeah. Yeah. Because right, big give or take. Yeah, yeah roughly depending on the battery. Yeah, that's yeah, a what's 350? the range on that in like eco mode? Five hundred and twenty miles. That's a lot. It's got a big fucking battery and it's very efficient. That's a nine hundred. Was it nine hundred watt architecture? Battery? It's nine hundred volt. Volt. Yeah, volt. I, I, I'm still trying to get the. I term still, I don't understand. Nine hundred volt. So the voltage is can the current can flow in and out really fast, mm-hmm. right? So that's how you get really good acceleration, and that's how you get really fast charging. Is mm-hmm. the nine hundred volt architecture? Right. Oh, oh, kilowatt is. The power, mm-hmm. right? Like so, that would be like the torque. Yeah, the and then kilowatt hour is the battery storage, mm-hmm. is the size of the tank. I'm already calling a cab. I'm confused. I, it is, it is, <laughs> dude, and it fucking bums me out because I, I, when I went to college, I took, I thought I wanted to be an engineer. I mm-hmm. took one year of engineering. I fucking hated it, and and then I switched to photography, which is what I actually enjoyed, and, mm-hmm. and I excelled at that. The only thing I was any good at. Right. Was intro to mechanical engineering, where we talked about horsepower and torque mm. and heat expansion and shit like that. By far, the worst thing, I, the <laughs> worst thing was intro to electrical engineering. Yeah. I was lost in the fucking weeds, and I got a D plus. <laughs> and now here we are, and here I need are. to know this shit. I need and to I know was this terrible shit. Terrible at it. Yeah. Uh, okay, here we go. Um, Twenty miles a minute, uh, three hundred and fifty kilowatt fast charging. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the Tycon. Yeah, the Audi, uh, e-tron, e-tron, the GT, yeah. and the Lucid, mm-hmm. and I'm I think maybe the Rivian will charge it on the 350s. I think Rivian. So. I think Rivian will as well. Yeah. The uh, is it the the RS one is the is the SUV R one T R one T R one and R one T and R one S pickup. We haven't driven them yet. No. Have you driven a Rivian yet? I have not. No. I'd like to try one. I like the the That's SUV cool. looks good. You know what's nice? It's on. I think it's on 20 inch wheels, but mm-hmm. the wheel arches are square, yeah. so they look like these big wheels. The new fucking the new uh, Jeep Grand Wagoneer mm. it looks like it has little tiny wheels. Yeah, it's really. That's weird. what. We, and you know when the CTSV came out, they sent me the coupe, and the we, the rear wheel looks so small because yeah. of the C pillar. Yeah, it was I, like I think the coupe is the worst looking of the CTSV family. Yeah, yeah, and it's like that whole back area is just the back huge. was too much. Yeah, too much. Yeah. The wagon was fun. Ooh. I think Rutz the wagon was one. the shit, and the yeah. wagons are if you find a manual wagon. Yeah. Oh, still over MSRP. Mm-hmm. There's still you know, still sixty sure. grand for a good one. Yeah, yeah. It's nice that the new Blackwing comes in a manual. Yeah, that's uh, that was wise of them to bring it back. That's in a manual. It's got the quad exhaust. It's got. Um, it's got a fucking LT4 in it. Yeah, it's got the proper motor. Six by six point two liter. Uh, I think it's supercharged. Supercharged six point two. Two or six six hundred eighty four maybe horsepower. It's a fuckload of power. I'm yeah. I'm very excited to have a go. Everyone who's driven one has loved it. I you know I when when they sent me the first one I was like oh just to have well, yeah. I'm, I'm shifting in a Cadillac. Even the last one that was automatic only, which mm-hmm. I the ones I never ever see on the street, mm-hmm. the, the outgoing Gen CTSV. That thing was amazing. Yeah. I hated the touchscreen cue. I think everything I, else they got about a knob it was incredible. In it I, I, I didn't like. It's like I'm getting audited. I'm you trying need to lower fucking it. knobs. <laughs> yeah, we were just at the at Radwood, which is an '80s and '90s car show, and they had a Pontiac Grand Prix mint condition. Mm-hmm. at 78 knobs on the dash. Jesus. The guy had a. You know, they put the fucking spec sheet out there. Yeah, and he was like, "This is a Pontiac Grand Prix. It has 78 knobs on the dash." <laughs> that was all it said. <laughs> it has 13,000 original miles. 78. What knobs. year was it? It was like an '89 Pontiac Grand Prix. All plastic. The interior is. Incredible! Look at the number. Look at the fucking number of buttons on that motherfucker right there. Jesus! Including the the whole steering wheel. The steering wheel is like a Simon. <laughs> <laughs> it's got these big plastic. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> look at all those buttons. Look what do they that. all even do? Got an EQ. Yeah. It's got. Oh my god! It's got so many things. But with the the buttons on the steering wheel are really. That is glorious. Yeah. Just Beautiful. A, just wow. a face full like of buttons. They're like garage door openers. They're just... It looks like a cheaply I just like had to reprogram my floor. garage door opener because it fucking started opening on its own. And we think what? someone like might have cloned our cloned signal. It? And so I had to wipe all the fucking remotes and reprogram them all. Hannah was like, the garage door just opened. I didn't touch anything. And with this happened Who's before, Tiffany? <laughs> who's Tiffany? Oh, does she have a key? She has a, she has a garage door opener. This yeah. happened before, and we thought a cat stepped on an opener. We're like, ah, oh, right. a cat stepped on an opener. Not nah. this time. And a white van drove past the house slowly, 
just after it opened. Was this before or after you stopped smoking weed? This was like a week ago. Oh. No. And the the van had the the city like city parks mm-hmm. seal on it. Okay. Yeah, Which, you can't make that out of vinyl and. But, yeah, it's a lot, exactly yeah. right. Shady ass white van, and so I was like, "All right, that's it. We're wiping all the remotes." So I wiped all the all the fucking remotes. So Smart. if you got my garage door opener, you fuck fucks, you're out of luck now. You had your chance. My wife conducts an experiment. She's like, I, "They can get the key fob." Okay, honey. So she's in the she's in the uh, the house, and I'm out in the driveway, and I'm going, "Please don't work. I don't want to have to do." Beep, 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 beep. Fuck. All right. So now we had to buy the box. Wait, to Wait do what? what? What happened? There's a box you can buy. You put it in there, and then they, you, no one can clone your key fob if they're going by the house. It's oh, like, really? Yeah. So she, we bought the box. Really? Yeah. Before we bought the box, I go put it in the freezer. Oh, is it like an RFID thing. Yeah. So you put that. So when but you get yours home, still you put works, it in there. but no other ones do. They can't get the. They can't clone it from. They can't it from the receiver. Yeah. It's oh. like it's like lead. It's like you put the kryptonite right. in around lead. But and yours Superman's still works. Fine. Yeah, but it works when you take it out. You just put it in the box. Oh, oh, oh. When you, you come home, you, you put it in the box. You keep the fucking thing. Oh, yeah. oh, It's like oh. A, you know, RFID wallets. It's like, like a safe. Cards in there. Yeah. It's like a, a safe Electronic for Electronic safe. Oh. Yeah. So, all right. I was so like, now well, you this, do is, this is the cheapest way out. Yeah. So now you got to do this every time? I, well, I got to put my key. You just put our keys in it. You your keys in the box. I got a box. That's how you feel better? Fine. That's how you sell it on the 67 Mustang. Yeah. They can't steal the frequency. Yeah. Honey, there you go. I, I don't Safer. have to sell it. She's like, believe me, my wife. We should get two. Get me one in pink. Oh, all right, you know, cool. My wife. I don't have to sell it. She likes cars and yeah. That yeah. I mean, that's cool. Your wife is never gonna argue with you about no. buying a car. No. Yeah. She was like, I was talking to because I was at night. I she hears you know Leno's garage. She'll mm-hmm. hear you your voice coming out. She'll just see me staring at the I was staring at the black wing. She's like, you should get it. I go yeah. the one I want's one hundred ten grand. On it. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay. Sweetie. I know it's all right. You eat every day. Did you know that? <laughs> then I thought I did this. I go. I can't get this, honey. I have to. I have to provide for my other family. <laughs> <laughs> Tiffany has one actually. <laughs> I'm very lucky. My wife couldn't give a fuck what cars I buy. Really? No, she doesn't care. She doesn't care. No, she does not. She's like just, just whatever. Makes what does you she happy. drive? She has the Mach E, and Mach-E. then she has the Delica, the '91 Mitsubishi. Have you seen that thing? Mm-mm. It's a ja- an imported Japanese van from 1991. The little one? It's not a K van, right. but it is. It's a cab over okay. van. Zach will get you a picture of it. Right. It's, you, you'd know it if you saw it. Okay. Like surfers and like yeah. overlanding mm-hmm. bros use them. It's that. Oh, that, okay. In fact, that's our van. That is our van. It's so cool. That it's cool. She fucking loves driving that thing around. It's got 1552 wheels on it, uh-huh. cool stereo, and it's nice because the, the second row and the third row, mm. second row swivels, yeah. so it can face the third row. Oh, like captain's chairs? Yeah, so we've got a little table, mm-hmm. so back when they shut the restaurants down, we'd have a we'd park the van outside the restaurant and get takeout and then have a little date night in the van That's outside great. the restaurant. It's cool. Yeah, it's got curtains, so you could close it up in there and light a little candle. Okay, so I'm, I'm sitting home, and... Uh, uh, I'm thinking, all right, can we live in a van? No. What if I had to live in a van? Eh, this is what happens to me. So I, I, I'm looking at the sprint, I'm, I'm, on, I'm specking out a sprinter van. All right. Oh, we can see, and I'm like, all right, this is good. And I got, I got so into it. And I was like, this could be and cool. Like, this van is 375000 375, <laughs> Fuck. I'm not saving a thing. Do you know how many people bought sprinter vans in 2020 and had nowhere to keep them? Mm. They're just fucking strewn about the streets There's in one Venice. that's parked right on, uh, there's ocean here and there's that little street. Yeah. It's never moved. Yeah. It's people just People bought them, there. they got nowhere to keep these fucking things. They're enormous. Yeah. That's why my new building has a 16 foot high door. So, so, you can get I, the, so I could store get Sprinter vans for people. Because I can get like a thousand bucks a month for storing a Sprinter van. Hell yeah. But um, the, be advised. Go ahead. There are some differences. Of? Quality of build. Mm. Like, Oh, I'm not doing it. I just okay. spec it all out. Yeah, yeah. And you don't really want to live. Living a, in a van is for fucking Instagram influencers. Yeah, I'm not. It's not like you don't really want to do I'm too old that. to live in a van. I need, no. I, need, I, need, I need the NFL package. There's a lot and of things I need. Especially one of the off-road ones because like you want to go off-roading. Yeah. But you don't want to off road your bed when actual I'm done. house. Yeah. Yes, off road a Range yeah. Rover to the hotel. That's where I want to go. Yeah. That's right. I, exactly. I, it, it was like when I used to do. Uh, I used to do the resorts, right? And you would stay at the resorts. Yeah. I would do stand up. I'm like, I don't want to live with the audience. When I'm done, I'm going home. Yeah. You, know, so you know, got to see them at the buffet. Yeah, the I got to right. walk around. I got to see them. Mm-hmm. Leno's oh, yeah. got that figured out. His gig. What? He goes and does some theater in fucking who knows where, and they got, the, got plane the plane on standby. Yeah, the plane does me stand- fucking home. He's done. Yeah. Yeah. That's the move. Yeah. Must be nice. I gotta get a plane. Gotta get a plane. Zach, bring him a plane. You and Bert Kreischer oh, cool. could split one. 
Yeah. He won't shut up about how he needs a fucking plane. No. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> he's a uh, he's very he's successful enough where he's flying first class, sure. but he hasn't quite made it to the to, to, the, to the PJ level. The yeah. PJ level is oh the Honda Jet. The Honda Jet. My friend's a Honda pilot. Jet she flies cool. the Honda Jet. Really? Yeah. She it's flies. Fucking the, cool. I don't know what ma- what makes it other than the fact that it's a Honda. Mm-hmm. Is it what we know about Honda engines? Is that why the Honda Jet is cool? It's got a K need- series in it. It's K swap. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's uh, from what I heard, it's like real easy to fly. You don't need a lot of uh, there's no crew. I mean, there's two people. I bet flying. in the next ten years, Tanner gets a Honda Jet. The next ten He's minutes, he'll get a Honda Jet. The fuck. I love his fly, his flight videos on yeah. Instagram. They're cool as fuck. Hey, it's Tanner. Uh, okay. He when he did a gig with us out in uh, Chuckwalla mm-hmm. in uh, like end of last year. He he flew there, obviously mm-hmm. landed on the fucking track as you do. Yep. And uh, when he went to leave, he fucking buzzed the tower like a boss. He yeah. like took off, looped around, and then dive bombed and fucking buzzed the tower. Is so G. Yeah. Go to Big he Bear. See you later. He went home. I saw him at SEMA, and I go, well, "Let's have dinner." He goes, "I'm going home. I'll come back tomorrow." He's got the plane. <laughs> he flew, he flew every home. day from SEMA. Did you ask him? It's like an hour. Was it gonna be forty five minutes from Vegas? Wow, yeah, right? Vegas to. Or it's oh. Deep or North County, San Diego. That's yeah. that's close. Yeah, that's a fast plane too. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, he, it's you know, he pretty went awesome. home every night. When that's all awesome. of Southern California becomes like the size of West LA mm. to you, you know what I mean? Yeah, like that just rules. Yeah, it's like I I'm, I look forward to my drive to San Francisco because I like to drive. But if I could do that, and, if you had your own plane, our fr- our, all of our friends that have small planes mm-hmm. use them incredibly frequently sure our friend Aaron Robinson flies fucking all over the place mm-hmm. I just don't have the I don't have it in me to commit to that kind of you know what I mean to the school and the radio chatter and all the fucking yeah. things that go it takes a certain mind that I don't have yeah I don't I don't I'll sit in the back <laughs> just yeah. wake wake me when we sit land. in the back <clears throat> Turn the fucking oh, vents on other people. Are you dirty? Yeah, right? I, I've fixed too many things in my car with electrical, electrical tape and been like, that's fine. That yeah. I can't do the walk around maintenance, all that stuff. Yeah. Like even just, not the maintenance, but like you have to walk around and do all the checklists. And if you don't notice a thing, this happened to my friend, he's, and he's an engineer, and they didn't notice a thing, and they took off, and the engine turned off, like Jesus. on ascent. And he went, okay, our choices are we try to restart the engine, and if that doesn't work, we look for a field. And that's... He's like, it was Can't scary. you do both? Like, the only, so he, he, they did the restart procedure, and it started up, and they flew back to the airport, landed, and there was a seal that was broken that basically just pulled all the fuel out of that wing once they got uh, up to speed. Mm. So they had to stay overnight while that got fixed. But it was just something that you would have seen walking around it, yeah. but it but it had rained, so the ground was wet, yeah. and so the the gas that was dripping kind of got you couldn't tell. the water. He didn't yeah. see like a little rainbows in there no. mixed with the... I heard that. I was like, that's why I can't be a Yeah, pilot. no, thank you. Yeah, I don't, I can't my trust car, me. If my car fuel system stops, I pull over to the side of the road and I sit there. Yeah. That's that. Yeah. I don't fall out of the sky. I have to trust <laughs> <Right>. me. <laughs> Yeah, I don't trust that. me. No, that's my shrink set. He goes, you have to learn how to trust yourself. I'm like, are you out of your fucking Bro, mind? I won't even change my own brake pads. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking kidding me? Trust me yeah. for my brakes? Your calipers nah. are on backwards. Hard. I knew I shouldn't have trust me. Hard net. <laughs> yeah. A torque wrench and a lug nut is the extent of which I will trust myself yeah. working on a vehicle. Fuck to the nose, yeah, sir. Not, not shit that leaves the ground. No. Man. No. Uh, do we have questions from people, Zach? Mm-hmm. Yeah, a few. For our Patreon? We do a little Patreon Patreon. Thing. Patreon ah. slash the Smoking Welk, Tire Podcast. Welcome, Patreon. Yes. People have been liking the Patreon, actually. Uh, uh, what did you never draw? Yeah, Adam, what, uh, Rich Bebenroth, Adam, what is uh, one, I believe that's supposed to say, one car right. you've never driven that is on your dream list? Excellent question. Uh, it's going to be weird because I really want a 67 Sunbeam Tiger with a 302. Oh, they're cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they're cool. 302, I want to drive that. You ever see the coupe one with the yeah. Sunbeam with the really, with yeah. like the Le Mans I want the hard roof? top. Yeah, 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 they're awesome. Yeah, that they one. They look fucking cool as hell, too. Yeah. That looks really cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't get a chance to drive the Vector when we had it, just to say I did. <laughs> and the Bugatti. Talk about being disappointed yeah, with something. Yeah. That would have been it. Well, Countach, I want to drive too, and I'm sure that's going to be, I won't be able to see out of it, but I always want to drive the Countach. Right, Countach. let the fight begin. The Veyron, Tanner got to drive the Veyron, and I think, I don't know if Rutt got to drive it, but I, I wasn't on that shoot. I you could probably uh, get seat time in a Chiron, the, the, yeah. the, the, the Veyron replacement. Mm-hmm. Those are those are around. I mean, yeah. they don't. They're not like. Have you driven available. a Koenigsegg? Yes, once. Yeah, it was incredible. Yeah, yeah, did not disappoint. Yeah, worth what they charge. Right. Yeah, it's oh, insane. The Pagani Zonda, the F Roadster. Uh huh. 
the roads that I'll drive that one Those and the Huayra as long as we're in the Pagani family. Oh, you've got a totally reasonable list of cars. Yeah. If you go to Italy, and you could go visit the Pagani factory. I'm so pissed. I was things. supposed to go to Bologna. We we're gonna do this Lamborghini thing. And then they're all right there. I know, they're all right there. Right they get out of the way when they come out. Bravo, bravo. Yo, they freak <laughs> out, right? Because yeah. they don't, they, believe it or not, they don't. people don't see those cars in Italy a lot. Yeah. They, the, Italy is one of the worst selling markets for those cars, mainly because yeah. people just don't have money over yeah, there. Yeah, there's no money in the roads. It is but big. If, and if you drive one, any Italian supercar around Italy, people lose their shit. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah. Um, procrastinate. Adam, if you got the chance right now to own one 90s or early 2000s luxury sedan in immaculate condition with mm. low miles at any cost, I think that just means unlimited budget. What would you pick and why? Mm. Mm. What is the what is the year of that? Oh, I'm trying to think. Early 2000s? I mean, it's flexibility, flexibility is the question, dude. Whatever. <laughs> I always liked the... Uh, um, what was the, the the seven series, the BMW seven? Oh, series? like E thirty eight with the James Bond yeah, joint. The James yeah, Bond yeah. E thirty eight. But did that come in a manual? No, not in America. No. Only in, in Europe. There, the one from the transporter yeah, was yeah, a yeah. stick. Yeah. In yeah. Europe, there was a tra- there That's was a manual. That's always one. fun for me. There's some folks that have. Uh, Every once in a while, one comes up for sale that's got like an M5 engine and a manual yeah, swapped yeah, yeah. into yeah, it. Yeah, that's, the, that's those are the, awesome. Those the, and and the proportions always look good. Short wheelbase, yeah, not long wheelbase. Not the it's big gotta one. Be the short wheelbase yeah. and parallel wheels. It's the same thing with the Escalade. I don't want that. They gave right, me the right. 19 foot, foot wheel. Lincoln Felter gave me his. Oh, really? Every time I see Ken, he's like, "You broke my truck." I go, "It was the it was the PA. I had to take the hit for it." <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't me, but I had to take the hit for it. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, I would get that. That that that, that always that's that a good one. Cars, yeah. BMW seven series E thirty eight. Yeah, manual swap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They oh, they pop up once in a while for sale. Yeah, because the enthusiasts love to put the manual in the short wheel. Yeah, yeah, because they want their transporter vibes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Jonathan K, dream cars you'd like to have in your garage? I think we've kind of covered that one already. Yeah. Daniel Hunsiger, uh, if you were to do a bit. Relating to cars, what would be the most interesting thing or person to make fun of? I actually have there a is, bit. There is a little bit in your new special. There's a My, little bit of car humor. Yep. There's a bunch of uh, a little stuff in there. And one of the jokes I really like is all, and I'll, I'll just say all spiritual truths were developed before the automobile. Because the first step in any kind of spiritual evolution is to remove judgment. Judgment of yourself and judgment of other people. It's impossible not to judge another human being when you're behind the wheel of an automobile. It's very true. I can't do it. I believe we're all in this world together. We we're all here to learn how to love each other. As soon as I get behind the wheel of a car, I'm like, look at this fat bastard. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> Honey, he's eating. He's eating while he's driving. He's eating spaghetti, for Christ's sake. Can I blow up one, just one little bit from your new special that Go I thought ahead. was really funny? Yes. About- yeah, very ironic there. Guy in a Prius cut me off, gave me the finger, and he had a coexist bumper sticker on the back of his car. <laughs> he was like, we're all one, but I'm first. <laughs> I think that's the master plan if you drive a Prius. Like, we're saving the earth by killing the people. (laughs) I was behind him, I was seething. I was like, I'm gonna put my carbon footprint on your granola ass. (laughs) And my wife was like, you're judging that man. That's why you're angry. (laughs) Judge not, lest ye be judged. I'm like, honey, the Bible was written before cars were invented, okay? (laughs) Right now, God on high is watching this entire scene, thinking to himself, look at this moron in a Prius. I'm omnipotent. I have no idea how this happened. I got to start again with a whole new group of monkeys. I can't fix this. (sighs) Jesus. What? Not you. Getting flipped off by a guy who's got a coexist sticker on his Prius. Yeah, guy in a Prius cut me off, (laughs) gave me the fucking finger, and he had a coexist bumper sticker on the back. He's like, we're all one, but I'm first. Yeah. I, I, I LOL'd at that bit. Yeah. That's very funny. Uh, Dante Casali, if, Saf- if Safari and Donk enthusiasts both want lifted cars, what car model would appeal to both, and why is it a boxy 900 wagon? There was a uh, Safari uh, Volvo 960 at Bradwood, and it looked fucking awesome. Yeah? It looked great. Did you see the Volvo, like El Camino looking thing? The, the blue one with the yellow stripes that's running around? No. Yeah, it's like a Volvo El Camino looking thing. It was, it was the strangest thing I've ever seen. Zach and I were just on a uh, an event called the Driving While Awesome Rally, which is like right. an 80s and 90s driving event, mm-hmm. and a guy had a, a Volvo wagon that he'd swapped an LS motor into, <clears throat> and it was very, oh, that there thing? There it is. 
1978 Volvo 240 up up top. Yeah. What the fuck is that? It was a yellow. Guy's got one. This I seems was... like the parts truck for a Volvo shop. Whoa. Yeah, it's got to it? be. Yeah, in fact, it's, it absolutely must be. Sven made it. It looks cool as fuck. It Those does. are Volvos like racing uh, that works colors. Well. Yeah, that was, uh, that's that. It was, it was that kind of. Go, 240 that, yeah, wagon right there. pickup. Oh, that one's done out of a 740. Yeah. Oh, how interesting. This looks like a Volvo Brat. Well, look, it's yeah. the angle of that. It is. is uh, yeah. And it's in front of a Volvo uh, service shop. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You could always trust a, a service center to build a, a weird amino yeah. out of. Uh, I, I, mean, I got to be honest; it doesn't look it doesn't look terrible. These are I mean, done the, well. the body it's lines easy, are yeah. pretty decent. No, yeah, those are pretty cool. What would you What would, would you like to amino something? I saw a not, caddy amino. That's cool. Yeah, I saw a caddy amino. Yeah. It was really cool. They also in the Peterson. Did you see the the uh, Pope mobile? Oh, the yes. Mexican Pope mobile. <laughs> yeah. Did they tell you the story? What, was there more of a story yeah, than it's, it's a Mexican It's, it's an old DTS, right? So they cut the back off. They put a fishing chair on it. They thought the Pope was going to ride around and wave. <laughs> it is people. a fishing chair. It's a fucking fishing <laughs> it's chair. It's a fighting chair. Yeah. yeah. You're sitting there. It's like, it's like the Pope is sitting there going, I once caught a Mexican re- yeah. this big. <laughs> wet the reel, Hooper. Wet the reel. So I said, did the Pope use it? He goes, the Swiss guard came. The Pope blessed it. Mm-hmm. Right? The, the Swiss guard was, the guards, the Pope leans over and goes, thank you. You're not getting in this piece of shit, Papa. <laughs> And I said, can I sit in a chair and take a picture? He goes, you can, but the last guy that did it got really sick. I'm like, ah, fuck it. I'm not. <laughs> I don't need a curse put on me. I once uh, I once dug around Saddam Hussein's limo down in the basement of the Peterson. Yeah, yeah. I was like down there with just one guy, and yeah. I was like, let me just look at the trunk. And? Let me just look at the trunk. And there's some like old Iraqi newspapers and a bunch of fucking sand. <laughs> There was a bunch of sand in the I, truck, yeah. and there was it was just it was just weird and creepy. But yeah. I was like, I just want to see what's yeah, in Saddam's see trunk. trunk. Like there was a bunch of old uh, Iraqi newspapers. Did you see the Pantera, the bullet hole that yeah. in the Pantera that yeah, Elvis the shot, shot the twenty two? Yeah. yeah, I mean, ima- if you imagine doing that today, just shooting a no. hole in your fucking car, you can't, you can't do it. No, I've no, been it. pretty mad at my car before, but you know. shot, but but you've not been rich enough to go fuck this that, thing and just yeah. shoot a hole. Yeah, in it. if I lived far enough away and got rich enough and tried to fix something, it could happen. Um, Jake asked for behind the scenes stories from Top Gear. I'm pretty sure we've done that on previous podcast yeah, appearances. We did a bunch of them. Um, Jake also wants to get Alonzo Bowden back on. I'll call Alonzo. He's a sweetheart. Alonzo's great. Mm-hmm. He need, he's a fucking real motorcycle enthusiast and a car enthusiast. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> Alan says, Adam, have you tacoed any more Cadillacs ha. in half? Was that a one and done? Uh, no, that that uh, that jump was like, I that told thing, you a story that jump. That was right? a legendary jump. Yeah, but I told you a story about that. I'm With sure you did. Tanner. But- Tanner, there was no safety in that. There's no, no. nothing. No one knew I was going to do it. Neither did I. <laughs> Tanner pulled the the, uh, uh, the seatbelt, the shoulder strap, put it under the headrest, said, you'll be fine. I got an $8 fucking helmet on. It says Fisher Price on it. This ain't a fucking yeah. So I jump it, right? I land it. Tanner comes up. His face is white. And he just goes like this. He goes, dude. <laughs> 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 Not what you want him no. to say. Is it too? In, uh, <laughs> in the British Top Gear, they installed wow. roll cages in those We didn't have cars. any of that <laughs> shit. <laughs> Look how high. fucking Maverick yeah, went you on actually, fire. You really got some the fucking The wiring air. harness went up in that thing. <laughs> there are, you are four wheels off above a kicker landing, and there that's, are that's, three feet of air, air between that's the tires real and air. the ground. That's, yeah. I tell you, that was fu- That was one of those Dude. things... That feeling we have because this is the last shot of the day. <laughs> well, basically, because I wrecked it. But look at the f- picture from the front of where the f- where the front end comes down. All the top left sack, uh, where the f- where the front end. Were you okay <laughs> after? Oh, were you okay <laughs> after this? Yeah, it was. You know, the adrenaline was pumping, but I was. You know, it hurt the next day. Well, the whole bit. frame took the the impact. Yeah, right? the whole and then there wasn't a <laughs> dude. You are really high in the air. Yeah. That's that's a and big that thing's air. what five thousand pounds. Yeah, it's a big air. <laughs> No it's joke. a big girl, man. I remember seeing this. That was like the title shot of the trailer after this. Here's the thing, and I got into yeah, we got into an yeah. argument because the first episode was the Lamborghini one. I go, this has got to be our first episode. <laughs> yeah, and you know, the, yeah. yeah, that was great. That's the actual. That's the GT40. That's the '66 race car. Did you get to have a go in that? Yeah, well, it's right hand. I drove it eight feet. Yeah, but yeah. That wow, was you great. look like a child in this photo. 
I I was as happy as a, I had that model when I was a kid. Yeah. I was I was I was eleven years old. That I picture. drove the super performance version of that, which is like the you know the yeah, pretty the, close the, approximation. The, the African one. one, the the guy in Africa that makes them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There, it was fucking really, really badass. And the, hairy. So his his thing happened to me. The brake cable on the left side was too short. Oh, so good. you step on the brakes, you're making a left. <laughs> I, I told Tanner, I go, I go, I, go, I don't know. Am Mark I out of Donahue shape on this turn? This, no problem. Goes, nah, it's the break game. <laughs> uh, Miles wants to know Adam's take on modern Cadillacs and their future. Uh, the CT. CT6 Blackwing. Yeah, yeah. That's what it's at. The Blackwing. Yeah. That's, I mean, and I think from what I read, it's going to be the last one because GM's going what? All electric and I don't know if they're going to keep know, making them. I mean, I could see the new Escalade. Like, I could see Cadillac becoming an, an EV brand. Mm. I mean, the, you know, well, the, they got to pick what? one. Thirty-five and thirty-five, they're all EV. Well, we'll see. We'll see. It's you get the head, you get front page yeah. when you when you make the announcement, yeah. and when it becomes untenable and you mm. walk it back in seven years, you get yeah. page B twelve. Well, <laughs> <laughs> but I that's that car is great. I mean, even the little one. The uh, CT5? The five. Yeah. Oh, uh, the four. Uh, four. four. CT4V? Four, four. 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 I think it's four. The five's a big one. But, yeah, even a little one is fun to drive. I mean, I want to get my hands on that, too. You know? I drove the little one the base model, and, and it was underwhelming. But mm. I've heard the, the Blackwing version The Blackwing's is the one I want to drive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The oh. fact that you can still get it with a manual. Yeah. That's where that's I, like where the I commitment. hope the future goes with Cadillac. I, I like I want, the, Yeah, I if, there, if the future was only EVs or stick shift cars with 500 horsepower, yeah, nah, that would the, be I excellent. mean, the other one, the, the automatic in that is, what, 10 speeds? Yeah, it is. They got the t that's a lot of gears. Yeah. Fortunately, like every time I've driven a ten speed, like in a sporting manner, mm -hmm. it's still like second, third, and fourth. Yeah. And they just have a bunch of overdrives for fuel economy. Fuel shift. Yeah, yeah. You don't need to shift a whole lot more. Yeah, but that's. I mean, that that's beautiful. It looks it's good in the car. It does look yeah. nice. Yeah, yeah. You can get the uh, the uh, 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 mirror caps. You can get black mirror caps on it. Mm -hmm. uh, and they got that panoramic sunroof. Um, that was pretty cool. Get get at me, Jimmy. You know who you are. I want to drive. Yeah. Hopefully, we'll see. I'll I check my phone after this podcast. Maybe he'll get back to me. Uh, I think we got like one or two more. These okay. are uh, general car questions. Oh, general car questions. All right. Let's see what we got here. Jeffrey Fritz, would you prefer a loaded manual uh, GTS, GTS 4.0 or a manual GT4 for this scenario? Sole daily driver, GTS. Yep. Mm. GTS comfort seats, 35 minute commute. 20% on very poor payment, one to two track days a year, weekend canyon carving. Yeah, GTS 4.0. Yep. Yeah. That's yeah. I would I would That's not a lot with. of thinking for that question. You know why? Because <laughs> that's a well thought out question. Yeah, that's, Most people don't That wasn't the first draft. No. It was He goes, but props to him for that. 55 I'm, minutes, too but, long. But what happens is people go, should I get the GTS or the GT4? And I go, yeah. I don't know anything about you. So yeah. thank you for yeah. putting thank that you in. For, yeah. What car should I drive? How about what's your budget? Yeah. What weather do you live in? Yeah, do you yeah. need all-wheel drive? Exactly. Yeah. That's, why, that's why I appreciate the thought-out comment. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, well, this one was from our last show. Oh, but whoops. And uh, Joe, I think you should sell your C38 Rentec on Cars and Bids. I think. I think Doug would appreciate that. Mm -hmm. um, Adam's special, It's Scary in Here, is on YouTube. Yep. And it's free. And it's free. And it's free. It's amazing. Free. And I cannot recommend it highly enough. Uh, Thank you. You can just search Adam Ferrara new special on YouTube, and it'll be the first thing that comes up. Thank I watched you. it on the elliptical yesterday, and it was fucking funny. You're a I kind appreciate man. it. Are you doing? Are you doing gigs? Are you I am. I'm in. Uh, you can get all tour, on my tour page. I think I'm going to Texas, uh, the Addison Improv, January 21 and 20, uh, 20 and 21, or 21 and 22 that weekend. Then I'm at uh, CB Live in uh, Phoenix. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I didn't put the Texas date up there. But I'm at CB Live in Phoenix. We got, we got Phoenix. We got Phoenix, and we got Texas coming up. And what then, is that car that you're in in that that's photo? That's the Bad Penny. That's the '68 Camaro, oh, the 700. Yeah. And, I'll say 750. I could be wrong, but that's the Bad Penny. And of course, your podcast is wherever you get, get your podcasts. podcast. Yeah, for our podcast. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I got Ant Amstead coming up. Oh, you do? Yeah, I'm talking He's about a sweetheart, Ant, isn't he? About Radford. Yes. Ant uh, and Jensen came Radford. and did our show, and they were fucking cool as hell. Aren't they? Yeah. They're, it was they awesome. have Bondurant now. Yeah, they bought Bondurant. Bought Bondurant Isn't that hilarious? and made the. They have the seventy Hellcats. <laughs> yeah. I was down there with Tanner. And you get a Hellcat. Yeah. And you get a Hellcat. And you get a Hellcat. I was down there fucking around with Tanner. It was fun. Yeah, it's yeah. cool to own your own racetrack, isn't it? Nice, isn't it? And the, and the oh, you were with us at the party, so you saw the car. Yeah. 
and it looks great. It looks gorgeous. And I saw the video of uh, Jensen driving it around. It looks mm -hmm. good in motion, too. Dude, I like the, the tail yeah. on the back. It, it comes with the Bremont it. dash clocks, and Bremont sent us Look at that. Isn't that cool? That's beautiful. The Bremont rally timers that mm -hmm. are standard equipment on the Radford Type 62. That is nice. That guy, uh, um, Nims, who summited all 14 of the hardest peaks in six months, mm -hmm. sponsored by Bremont. He was wearing Bremont shit the whole the whole time. Nice. It was a G move from them. That's a bad motherfucking documentary. It's called, um, I think it's just called 14 Peaks on mm -hmm. Netflix. Um, Thanks, Adam. Always, Always good to a see pleasure you, my friend. To see you. Had I a great time at your special. party. Thank you, buddy. I can relate to all your shit. Except <laughs> your fucking weirdo Goomba stuff. Besides that. I'm sorry. You I don't do need a to Jew know version that. next. Really? Yeah, please. All right. I'll, I'll, give, I'll feed you some stuff. Otherwise, it'd be a Shanda. Hey. Be a Shanda <laughs> not to do it. Sag is in. If not, now, when? There you go. I like that. I like your flexibility there with yeah. your accents. It's not it's just, just Goomba. It's the same thing. It basically is. It's food, family, and guilt. Yep. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> Long Island is an Italian Jewish neighborhood. Yeah. It's the same shit. Italian guilt comes from the church, whereas the Jewish guilt well, comes from all the church. You guys got it easy because you got guilt. We got shame. Yes. Yeah, right. Italians got, he's dead, your fault. That's where you're, I'm starting. <laughs> we just have your fault, but do whatever you want Yeah, to do. your fault. You want to call? Fine, don't call. You yeah. live with that. <laughs> it would really make me feel better. Mm -hmm. If you would, I know you're busy. If you come home and I should be deceased, just <laughs> make sure in 24 hours I'm in the ground and cover the mirrors for God's sake. So like the Italians are like, "Don't you dare touch yourself at night." And you know, Jewish, yeah. Jewish upbringing is like, "You're not. Why not? Do you need oil, lotion? What do you want? <laughs> What's wrong with you? Yeah. This is why you're cranky. Find yourself. Need a cracker. Yeah. <laughs> That's our show, folks. We are. Uh, well, we're off for we're Christmas. Off for Christmas. We're off for Christmas. Sure. See your ass in January. Be Bye. good. Be happy. Thank you.